scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Is that rain? If there's rain, we have to find a way. Please, I hope the ushers are around. So if it's rain, we don't want rain to hit the people. We can come and crowd ourselves inside. So please mobilize them if it's rain. Please come in, come in, come in. Let them find expression. Come with your seats if you can. Can we appreciate them again as they do this? Come with your seats, please. Let's honestly celebrate them. Ushers, just mobilize them. There are spaces in front. Um, you can shift in front. Those of you in front, let them have space. Look, gentlemen, stand up. Shift. I'm saying shift and you're watching. Stand up and shift so that they can have um, space. Welcome them as they come in. God bless you. Sorry about the challenge and the convenience. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Heaven and earth adore you. Angels bow before you. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Sing heaven and earth adore you. Angels bow before you. You're beautiful. 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 sitting you can sit for 10 minutes and stand up and help them bring four people in front they can come and occupy the seat don't worry you are the men and women of God today come and balance and enjoy yourself Hallelujah. Can we pray in the spirit for just two or three minutes while the sound people just help us fix up everything. Father, we bless you. Go ahead and pray. 
a training ground, so when the need arises, we just make sure you are praying. It's a communication of our passion, how much we love you. seated here are watching your future this is how men will come from nations to hear the word of the Lord upon your mouth yes you may sit in the rain but hear me there are many of you hours before your meeting time you will see people stand because there is something that his majesty has put upon your mouth it's not enough to talk you must have something to say there must be an anointing 
is the anointing that will compel people they will leave their nations they will leave their workplaces to come and seek the counsel of the Lord upon your lips let it be so in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah tonight's teaching is very strategic and very prophetic I want our hearts to be very very open pay attention no distraction those of us standing is a sacrifice those sitting pay attention those following us online pay attention and let's hear what the Lord has for us tonight I couldn't wait for the time for the meeting because of what I'm about to teach us um, I'm always excited coming around but then there are times that the Lord will put certain things in my spirit and I am always in a hurry to bring them because I cannot wait to see the transformation that will happen in the lives of people as they receive. So before I start, I'd like us to pray one more time and say, Lord, I'm a receiver. My heart is open. My heart is open. My heart is open. I realize that there is a generation that is at the mercy of what I am receiving. Please pray. Many of us in this place will be powerful men and women of God. Pay attention. You are not just listening for yourself. You are listening for the sake of the millions. Nameless, faceless people. Who will be hearing the counsel of God. hallelujah now I'm going to talk about a number of things tonight um, I really want to challenge us tonight I'll be teaching us on the principles of effective living principles of effective living Principles of effective living. Hallelujah. The difference. Can I have any two people here? Can come. Um, gentlemen can come. The difference between any two people. Watch this please everyone. The difference between any two people, the difference in the quality of their lives, the difference in the results that they command, the difference between their relevance as far as the program of God is concerned and the quality of their lives is principally dependent please listen not on their backgrounds necessarily not on their educational qualifications necessarily not on their connections necessarily the ultimate determinant of the quality of a man's life here on earth is his ideology your ideology you hear me teach this all the time. The principal determinant of the quality of your life here on earth is your ideology. I don't care what else you have. If you have an ideology that is not consistent with the ways of God, it's called the mind of Christ. If you can pay the price and get what the Bible calls the mind of Christ, then you are qualified 
to live life to its fullest based on the definition of heaven and even on the definition of earth. It's impossible to fail in life when you have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is God's ideology. The way he thinks, his perspective, his thought pattern. And so through the teachings, I know that we have a lot of impartations and all of that. But impartations become irrelevant when there is no well-constructed channel that can permit them to find expression to the fullest. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is like a dam. Your mindset is like the pipe that is properly channeled for its delivery. Are we together now? No matter how anointed you are, if your mindset, the build up of your ideology is not well constructed so as to allow the fullness of heaven find expression through you, your Christian experience will still be buried irrespective of the dimension of God's glory that you carry. So I want to start off tonight by talking to us about the excellency of a transformed mind. We're going to talk about a number of things. It's a training. We're under serious training. It's an apostolic and a prophetic training. Right? The excellency, the superiority of a transformed mind. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12, when you read from verse 2, it says, do not be conformed to this world. The Greek word here is aeon. The thinking pattern, the mindset that comes with this age. Do not allow yourself to come into alignment with that kind of ideology. Then it says, but be transformed. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Permit it. Allow it. Allow your mind pass through a system, a spiritual system that will edit you will upgrade you, will prune you and bring you to a point where your mind, you not only have the word of God, but you become the expression of the living logos. The word logos, or uh, the word um, logos, it's not just the, it's not written word. It's from the word that conveys the thoughts of a man. So when we say Christ is the living logos, the living word, that means that Jesus Christ was the accurate expression of everything the Father was thinking. Everything God was thinking, Jesus was living it out. That's what made him the living logos. And God's ultimate desire, hear me, God's desire ultimately is not for you to become a chief dispenser of revelation. Is that you become so full of the word that you become an epistle yourself. Your life becomes an expression of the living logos that your mindset your life is so aligned that you become an expression of the thought of God for you at time so God's ultimate desire is not to have exceptional preachers God's ultimate desire is to bring us to a point where there is such excellency in our ideologies these two gentlemen perceive life from different standpoints and the principal motivation that sponsors their perception is their mindset. Are we together now? Bless you. Your ideology. I was teaching the school of ministry students yesterday. And we, we touch on a few things that I taught them yesterday. I just felt very um, impressed in my spirit by the Holy Spirit too incorporate some of those things your ideology is the principal motivator of your responses the way you respond to life the way you respond to God please pay attention the way you respond to situations and circumstances are as a result of your mindset your ideology your mentality Your ideology also sponsors your interpretation. The way you interpret happenings in your life. The way you interpret the occurrences. 
the way you interpret success the way you interpret failure the way you interpret um, people the way you interpret God is a resultant effect of your mindset your ideology there are people for instance who are under a lot of pressure over their physical appearance dressing well um, getting a designer watch a designer cloth you know they are, they are so conscious about those things that consciousness is stimulated by an ideology is that true among other reasons an ideology that informs them that on the strength of wearing expensive things you are perceived to be valuable are we together now so that ideology stimulates a passion for one thing a lot of things there are people for instance who reject prosperity and embrace poverty because according to their ideology simplicity is the same as being poor so in a bid to respond to a desire to be simple are we are we together now they they reject anything that will make them blessed you are helplessly a slave of your ideology you are helplessly a slave of your ideology your life literally revolves along the plane of your ideology and therefore if God wants to step into your life and upgrade you if God wants to bring you to a point where you are so built that you allow his spirit the fullness of his essence to find expression in you then you must be able to submit to him and allow him to change your ideology our ideologies are built by many factors culture for instance I've, I've, I've taught that here you can get the teachings culture have shaped our mindsets culture have shaped our perceptions we see things from a particular vista in physics there's what we call refraction right I, I taught the school of ministry students yesterday and I felt a need to just bring that example there is what we call refraction when you when you study physics there's even what they call a refractive index is that true um, you have sorry those of us who are not science based I apologize but it's a very simple explanation that on the strength of having a glass block or anything of that nature you look through it and you can see an object it will appear in a distance and in a form that may not be the way it is originally and that is on the strength of what you are looking at let me use an example that all of us can relate with how many of you have seen cars that um, they write something little or the side mirror objects appear larger or smaller than they actually are is that true so the what you are looking at in that mirror is not exactly the way it is you may see it bigger than it really is or smaller than it really is are you getting the point now so your interpretation is based on your perception you must understand this to be successful in life you must rise to a point where you have what I call a superior ideology an ideology that is so aligned to the mind of Christ many of us do not care about our ideologies and we labor in the place of prayer we labor in the place of fasting we assimilate the word and then there is such a bank of spiritual treasure but there is no platform for it to find expression because the realities of the spirit are, are like like power banks but they they are dependent on a transformed mind to fully find expression the degree to which you have the mind of christ is the degree to which you can allow heavenly things find expression through you this defines our possibilities in the kingdom hallelujah
so you must realize that your ideology is very important i keep challenging our ideologies because if your ideology does not change nothing will change in your life i guarantee you not even education will change you not marriage will change you everywhere you go you go with your ideology anything you do you do from the standpoint of your ideology there are some of us for instance come if this gentleman look up please everyone if you can if this gentleman has an ideology of inferiority he feels very bad about himself it doesn't matter how he got that ideology did you know that if you look at this guy and say wow your suit is beautiful you're looking sharp he will interpret your commendation on the strength of his ideology and he will think it's a diplomatic way of mocking him is that true whereas that's supposed to be a, 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 a I mean a good commendation that he should receive with thanksgiving but then it comes and is interpreted on the lens of his ideology and he goes back hating you for doing something right are we together now our mindsets are very important many of us are fighting battles that do not exist today battles that our minds created many of us are hating people today who do not even know our minds created that hatred there are people under stress that should never be under stress there are people dying under high blood pressure preachers dying because there is a parameter that their ideology has put together i know men of god who suffer all the time harass members to try to bring congregations because to them the few ones you have a crowd like this is a representation of your anointing are we together now and so they get deceived and rather than focusing to build the people they do not know that in a congregation like this success is not measured generally you pick people one by one to ascertain the extent of the man of god's contribution to their life you can never generalize a successful congregation if you want to know how successful koinonia is you have to pick men at random and then speak to them on the matters of the kingdom and find out their individual degrees of comprehension when you gauge the average on their of their understanding it represents the extent of my teaching not the crowd are you seeing that now yeah i learned this early in life so there are pastors who are under pressure and that wrong ideology motivates them into thinking the more I bring in men of God from abroad, the more I bring in this and that, the more there are conferences, the more there are conventions, the more crowds will come. Responding sincerely, but a slave to their ideologies. There are pastors and pastor's wives who are so insecure. If the pastor buys a particular kind of jeep, nobody buys that kind of jeep again because his concept of honor is that you stand alone are we together now there are pastors who the moment they find out that other younger ministers their training are rising up they create a spiritual teaching that ensures that they remain at a level and never rise up are we together now so their ideology is informing the activities in their ministry there are pastors for instance who think respect and honor in ministry is when you see a man of God and then you lie down. I'm, I'm not against uh, all of that, but I used to know uh, um, one, one very foolish pastor some years ago who made it a, a rule for his members to kneel down when they see him. No, no, literally, I'm not, I'm not joking. Anywhere in the market, in the rain, once you see him coming, you kneel down. Now, now, you see, listen, listen. Don't laugh. There are still people doing it today. There are churches where the man of God is so insecure. The moment there is anything that looks like a coup against him, they, they go as far as even flogging members. Are we together now? Your life revolves around the quality of your ideology. One person will be celebrating something and another one is destroying it because both of them are looking at the same thing from different perspectives and so as i challenge you every week 
part of the things that the Holy Ghost is doing is to be able to create a divorce between us and the ideologies that have kept us limited. Listen, many of us think that to make spiritual men, all you have to talk about is the seven rivers that are in heaven or the plain describing the things that are around the white throne. Believe me, believe me when I tell you this, you don't build people that way. You must give people a holistic building that makes them capable in every ramification. The moment you teach people and your, your paradigm to them is lopsided, the limitation of your spiritual understanding reflects on them. Have you seen churches like that? Men of prayer, but broke people. They are reflecting the man of God's bias. He has refused to open them up to that dimension. Or you have a church where people are leaders, they are visionaries, they are businessmen, but they are carnal. They are not spiritual at all. They are excellent. They are exceptional. They are reflecting the bias of the man of God. And it's my job under God to make sure. Don't worry guys, please. Except we have more people outside. But those here, I think they are, they are a lot comfortable in. So we don't have to bring them out. It's cold. So I don't think the heat is too much. Any asthmatic patient, you are healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So you must challenge yourself to contend for an excellent mindset. It is lack of an excellent mindset that makes, for instance, men of God fight themselves. Because they think respect in ministry or in the kingdom based on their mindset is when you stand alone and outshine others. Are we together now? And so the more a man of God stands in a class where he sustains the capacity to outshine others, Right? And so we compare ourselves with ourselves and the Bible says, whoever does that is not wise. The question now, before we even start is, are you willing to submit your mindset to be changed? Listen, I really cannot help you if you are unwilling, if you are, un, if you are not malleable enough for your mindset to be transformed. I made a decision years ago and that decision still stands. Anything that is not going to contribute to me manifesting the fullness of the life and the power of God, serving the Lord with all my heart and blessing my generation is not worth my pursuit. I will dump it. Including friendships, including ideologies about ministry if this for me given by god represents the highest level of ministry and this is the dimension that will produce the greatest efficiency in my life then i do not want to improve i want to stay here for the sake of that optimal delivery you must be this passionate about god and you must be passionate enough to submit your mind like, like you carry a cloth and you give a dry cleaner. He said, please go and walk on this cloth. Walk on it. How many of you have seen them repaint a car? You've seen them, you know, how, uh, uh, what they call them, the painters, the car painters now. They first take it to a workshop. Is that true? In a bit to paint that car, they can dismantle everything, the lights. Momentarily, the, the, the aesthetics of the car will have to um, be forgotten for a while. You have to remove the bulbs, remove everything. You have to take away the tires. You have to get all of these things and put together. And then you start spraying. And when you spray, you find out that there are little things. You have to fix up everything. But the moment you are done and you bring out that car, the value increases. That's what God is doing to and so you must submit yourself to learn in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Lay your hands on your head and pray for one minute and say, Lord, everything inside this head that needs to change must change. Lift your voice and pray. I'm tired of keeping things in my mind that are responsible for authorizing darkness in my life. I'm tired of holding on to ideologies that are keeping me poor keeping me powerless 
keeping me uh, in lack of character. I am tired of holding on to precepts and ideologies that are making me fail. I am truly, truly determined. Lord, I authorize you to edit my mind. Change my ideologies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Proverbs chapter 1. Very quickly, let's start. We're going to talk about four different areas very quickly. This was a preparatory teaching. Just to get our minds together. Proverbs chapter 1. We'll read from verse 3 and 4. And then we'll commence the teaching. Are you there? Proverbs chapter 1, 3 and 4. If you are there, say amen. Let's be fast. It says, to receive the instruction of wisdom, righteousness, justice, and equity. Verse 4. It says, to give prudence to the simple, the young man knowledge and discretion. Let's read it to verse 5. A wise man will hear and he will increase in learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. In other words, he was telling us the motivation behind the writing of the book of Proverbs. That this is the motivation. That every time people who are inclined to wisdom hear it, it will increase them in learning. Hallelujah. I want to challenge your understanding first and foremost about life. Write that word down. Your understanding about life. Let's look at the concept of life and living very briefly. I am trusting that God will challenge us and improve the quality of our living. There are certain things you need to know about life for you to live effectively. Number one, life is a gift. Life is a trust. It's important that you are, if you are alive and under the sound of my voice, you realize this. Life is a gift. It doesn't matter whether you acknowledge the giver or not. Life is a gift. Secondly, life is a trust. What is a trust? A trust is something that is committed to you. Right? And accountability will be required of it. If you do not know that life is a gift, and if you do not know that life is a trust, then you can live anyhow. When a man takes a bottle of liquor, beer, and just gulps everything, he is expressing his ignorance about understanding that this life is a gift. Statistics, brothers and sisters, tells us, I don't know if it's an old statistic, I, don't, I really don't know what is the current statistics now. But as at the last time I checked, it said eight people die per second. How many people? Eight people die per second from the time we began this service till now you can calculate how many people have died and these people have not died just because they are not christians or they are backsliders pastors have been among them all kinds of things this year for instance one of our sisters transited to glory one who had committed herself serving very faithfully in the ministry was a time of grief for us but we rejoiced because she left with an understanding knowing that life is a gift and she spent her life serving the king let me tell you right now if no one has told you the life that you have is a gift life is also a trust the meaning of that is that one day the real owner of that life will make he will demand accountability for the use of that life. Drunkard, smoker, gambler, thief, terrorist, preacher, good husband, foolish man, wise man, it doesn't matter. Life is a trust. Look, this should, this should, this should bring a sense of reverence to you that you are not ultimately... Um, you are not the ultimate custodian of your life. You are only a steward of it. It's like a trust, right? 
It's like a grant. How you give somebody 10,000 naira and you say, start this business. I give you access, but it's not your own. I can call on you at every time to find out what you have done. And it is within my power to withdraw the grant if I see you misusing it. That revelation that your life is a trust alone will sponsor a sense of seriousness, will sponsor a sense of godliness, are we together? And will sponsor a sense of urgency as you live your life. The way people live their lives, especially young people, obviously shows that they are not aware first that life is a gift you watch people come back from a party they come back and they are drunk and the guy is on high speed and he takes one leg and puts it on top of the uh, uh, what they call it the steering and the guy is just speeding and the ladies in the car are laughing they are saying don't speed and the guy is trying to impress them it's because they are not aware that in one minute that gift can leave the rich fool forgot this. He built bands and kept it together and said, My soul, find rest. And he said, You are a foolish man. This night, today, your soul will be required. Are we together now? Very important. Koinonia, you must understand that if you woke up alive this morning and you are here listening to me, there is someone who gave you only a fool will say in his heart there is no God. No matter how stubborn you are. You do not know where the wind you breathe comes from. You have never tried to find out. Where does the wind store itself? When you sleep in the night you have never tried to find out where you go to. All you know is that you get up in the morning and you yawn around. But between your time of sleep and your time of waking up someone was watching you are we together and then you wake up with that arrogance Kai I'm happy to go and look for trouble again and the one who gave you the life is watching and the clock of your destiny is ticking and the devil beguiles you into thinking it does not matter oh it does don't let any man deceive you it does oh I'm going to challenge you are we together now? The consciousness that life is a trust alone will make you not to get up and intentionally want to destroy another life. Are we together now? Now don't feel bad for those of you who have had all kinds of past. We are not talking about that. The blood of Jesus has washed it. But then I'm not necessarily talking of things like abortion and the rest. When somebody gets up and he says, I like this girl. Sam, leave her alone. She's my girl and you carry knife to prove your, your passion and the fire that is burning inside your soul. That lust and you stab Sam and divide him into two. And then you bounce around and you are going to feel sleepy in the night. Look at Only a man that does not sleep has a right to claim he is a custodian of his life. Because after everything you do, I will wake up and I promise you I will deal with you. Foolish man. And he goes to sleep. For six hours he does not know what can happen. And then he wakes up and remembers that he planned to kill somebody. Then he goes to do it again. And then he returns tired and he sleeps. And he does that for 10 years, 20 years. And the real owner is just watching. He knows your name. He knows your every thought. He sees each tear that falls. And he hears you when I call. Life is a gift. Life is a trust. And let me tell you something. Life has a reason. There is a reason why everyone is alive. Whether you know it or not, if there is a restaurant and you do not know there is a restaurant, it doesn't stop the fact that there is food going on there. Is that true? That you are ignorant of the fact that the building you just passed is a restaurant does not mean they will stop cooking because of your ignorance. 
there is a reason why God kept you alive. You shot yourself with all kinds of injections, but there is a reason why God kept you alive. While you are smoking a bow and doing everything, there is a reason why God kept you alive. Are we together? While you are gulping tatalin, there is a reason why you are alive. Everyone who wants to maximize his life and living must be able to realize that the ultimate purpose of life is to, or the ultimate wisdom as far as living is concerned, is to spend your life serving the Lord and being a blessing to humanity. Any man that spends his time and his life doing this is a wise man. That you spend the entire lifespan of your life first and foremost realizing that there is a God in heaven. Oh, listen, listen. God consciousness is a key to effective living. The realization that there is God, that, that concept, that understanding, that there is one who is above me. There are people on earth who are stubborn. They don't listen to parents. There are people who are stubborn. They don't listen to the law. There are people who are hardened capons. They are occultists. They are criminals. But there is, there is a God that sits in the heavens. And he watches over the affairs of men. You must live with that God consciousness. That the purpose of your living is to commit your entire life serving the Lord and being a blessing to humanity. It told Abraham in Genesis 12, when you read 1 and 2, it says, In thee shall all the families of the earth, not be cursed, be blessed. If you want to live life to its fullest, you must live with eternity in view. Eternity in view. That no matter the quality of your life on earth, you realize that is only like a measuring tape. Listen, the, 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 the concept of eternity is something that if, if you do not keep reminding yourself, you will live a wasted life here on earth. I guarantee you, whether as a preacher, as just a, a citizen living in the world, a day will come when what we know as existence will be folded like a carpet. Are we together now? And that time is not too far from now. Whether you believe it or not, you must witness it. For sure. Did you know, brothers and sisters, that death is a mirage? There really is nothing. Death like cessation of living. No. Men don't stop living. They only exit this realm. The question has never been, will you spend eternity? You must spend it. The question is location. Not that you, you are going to spend eternity for sure. The question is what? Location. So when you live your life with eternity in view, knowing that all this one that I insult people and abuse people, a day will come, this life will be folded like a curtain. Those who are old people now, 70 years, 80. Do you know there was a time they were teenagers? And to them, they felt there was time. But you turn and see them now. All they have to tell you is a legacy of what they did with their own life. I can remember when I went to JS1. I remember clearly one iron box. My father went to go and bring one old box. They repainted it because he didn't want them to boggle it. Heavy box, you can't carry it alone. Yeah. Very clearly. We were going together with my colleagues. They were all crying, missing home. My excitement leaving home knew no bounds. I was happy. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I, I couldn't believe I was going to leave my father.
Today, we we'll only laugh about it. But back then, it was serious. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? The same way some of you are sitting down here, you will open your eyes and find out that your son is graduating from the university as a doctor. And he said, please tell me I'm lying. I was in Koinonia yesterday. No, you were in Koinonia 30 years ago, 50 years ago, 60 years ago. Life is very brief, deceptfully brief. Life is deceptfully brief. And if you don't come into that recognition and that realization that 80 years is not such a big time, 120 years is not such a big time compared to eternity. Eternity minus 120 years is what? James chapter 4 verse 14. This is just the first shot. There are one, two, three, four. Four of these that God is going to give us like a penicillin to really help us. James 4, okay. James 4, 14. Are we there? Okay, let me read. Whereas ye know not what shall be the next day. He was talking. Let's start reading from verse 13 so that you see the context. 13. Come now, ye that say today or tomorrow we shall go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. 14. Whereas ye know not what shall happen the next day. For what is your life? The apostle is teaching us now. It is even a vapor that appeared for a little time and vanished away. Listen, let me tell you the truth. James really meant what he was saying. I've seen this thing in the realm of the spirit. When you are caught up in the realm of the spirit and you look at earth, you will see it like a vapor. What you call reality is a vapor compared to the realm of the spirit. literally like smoke that will soon vanish you know how when you set a paper on fire smoke just comes and in less than one minute it's gone that's what happens that's why the bible says a thousand years in earth time is like a day before god one thousand years is like a day before god so from the day you were born till now is still god's today So when you stand up and say, I'm not your mate, in heaven, it's still today. While you are warning people and saying, let me tell you, it's still today. From the day you are born till the day you die, from heaven's view, it's called what? So every time God says today, he knows what he's saying. To you, you think it's tomorrow. Your tomorrow is in God's today. Bless me and see what I will become, they say we are in today we're already seeing what you will become listen when you know this you will truly serve god in truth that's what makes him an all-wise god his system of timing is amazing one thousand years to one day so when a preacher starts ministry and 10 years later on he has left god and he said lord bless me they are still watching the movie in today. I want you to fast forward life. And you will see the foolishness of men. If there is a way you can record a man's one week. And play that one week in a one hour video. You will know that we are really foolish as we live. All of a sudden you see a man coming to beg. Then the video fast forward. You see him stealing. Then later on you see him apologizing. Then you see him trying to look for another man's wife. Then you see him do something and you are like, my goodness, is this what we do? That's what we do all the time. You need to live in God's realm of today to see how foolish we live in this life. Is God helping us? 
if you want to live life to its fullest you must be guided by three things number one the fear of the lord number two conscience number three a sense of posterity those who live like fools are those who ignore this any man who is living to make the most of his life must live with a sense of the fear of the lord one number two conscience number three posterity psalms 90 verse 12 let's rush there psalms 90 verse 12 very popular scripture psalms 90 verse 12 it says so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom teach us to pay attention day by day as we live let us pay attention to our lives and the bible says we will apply our hearts unto wisdom that means if you number your day and i'm telling you the best time to number your day is during your birthday where you sit down it's not just the time to eat cake and turkey is the time to sit down and say my goodness i was 36 years last year i'm 37 years now what does that mean if i'm spending 120 years on earth 120 minus 36 this is how long i have to live what have i justified living 36 years oh i am 50 years everybody is saying congratulations golden jubilee midlife crisis how many more years do i have to live can i justify the 50 years of living your heart has been pumping for six years for 50 years it, it kept pumping and you were just using the energy it sent to you to do nonsense for 50 years there must be a change in the name of the lord jesus christ there must be a change for you to live effectively you must focus on the things that matter one of the deceptive things that people do that robs them from effective living is that they major on minor things and they minor on major things we spend all our time and energy on things that from heaven's perspective are considered minor then we give very little attention to the things that we would want to call major whereas from heaven's perspective of uh, that we call minor whereas from heaven's perspective there are major things is god speaking to us i'll give you an instance when someone gets up and his whole obsession in life is money marriage house car that that's everything that drives his life oh i must have a car i must have a house that person is majoring on minor things whereas the nobler things in life like your service and your commitment your testimony and your track record that you love god the sacrifices your commitment in the house of god the things that you have done on account of your faith the lives that you changed the destinies that came to know the lord jesus christ because you were born we minor on those things and so this is what we do one day we just challenge ourselves and say three days we are going to be on evangelism are you ready yes then we now go out and everybody is moving out and you just block somebody and say do you know that jesus is coming soon yes i am testy the person now says i'm testy you now bring him to the church and he sits down and then you never have a passion for souls again it was just it was just a church calendar activity to fulfill all righteousness you went out for two or three days one one or two people people who are even some of them were already born again you forced them to say the salvation prayer and wrote their names and brought the booklet and said pastor please take your rubbish i got people born again the passion is not genuine how many people have as a major passion for souls i'm not just talking of getting people born again but seeing lives and destinies changed These are the major things in life. 
what of a testimony look at what the bible says lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven how many people are interested in that kind of business the business of laying up for yourself treasures in heaven that when you go to heaven there's there's that song can, can reduce the key toss that that anglican song remember only remembered for what we have done play it mike Learn it. Very good song. It's a song that makes you think about your life. When you are living carelessly, it just calls you down. Thus would we pass from the earth and its toiling, only remembered by what we have done. Only remembered. Thus would we pass from the earth and its toiling. A strange man in the Bible. Listen, the seventh man from creation, the Bible calls him Enoch. This is all that the Bible tells us about Enoch. Never tells us how many wife or wives he married. Never told us how many cathedrals he built. This is what the Bible says. And Enoch walked with God. And he was not for God took him. Only one more time in scripture we see his prophecy. A man who lived so long and the summation of his existence is that he panted after God in all his life. What a testimony. If all there is in your testimony your epitaph when you die the troublemaker has gone finally peace returns to planet earth how about that let me tell you something god is my witness it is never my desire that if christ tarries and i depart from this world my ultimate pursuit is not to be associated with mundane things he started this, he started that, he started koinonia, he started this. All those things are rubbish as far as I'm concerned. All I want to know is how many lives can say, I am a life that was changed. That's the major. The house you built, the suit you died in, does not matter. It's a minor. But you are almost killing your tailor because of it. You are majoring on the minor. I am so glad you came. That at the end of my life, somebody can stand and say, it was because of Joshua Selman that I came. Not even in my death. That's the greatest testimony today. If you like, bring one million naira and say, man of God, the grace of God upon your life is like from earth to heaven. I'll just be listening to you. But if you want to turn me on, just tell me how God has used my life to change you. Sir, do you know that I used to be this and that? But see what the Lord has used koinonia messages. I, I can go back shedding tears. If you give me a plot of land, if you give me a car, thank God for those things. But I tell you sincerely, those things are mundane to me. My passion and my desire is to see how much I can have a testimony before my God and my creator that I spent my life serving him as a gratitude to this gift of life that he gave me. Second, that I can be able to be an extension of his influence to contribute my own quota to preparing his army and bring as many people my desire my desire is to sing your praise to the ends of the earth that we one mighty voice every tribe and tongue rejoices our hearts and our desire 
is to see the nations worship. This is why I sleep. This is why I wake up. This is why I eat. This is why I hate poverty. This is why I hate the devil. This is why I love people. This is my motivation. To be able to serve the Lord. That's why my secret place is my greatest asset. Not ministry. I love my secret place more than invitations to minister and whatever. No, 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 no. I love it more than a phone call that can change my life forever. Because when all is said and done, and this world fades like a shadow, there is only one track record. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into my rest. When was the last time you thought about this? If you thought about this, you would have withheld your mouth from blaspheming a man of God or gossiping about a roommate or a worker. Some of these excesses find expression in our lives when we forget. Is God helping us? You must focus on people if you want to live effectively. You must focus on your assignment. Focus on your business. There are people who live their lives and all you are doing is involving yourself with other people's business. You have your own life to live and your time is short. If God gave you 80 years to spend on earth and you spend 60 years escorting other people in destiny and then you don't even know why you were born, you don't know anything about your life, let me just chip this. If you are here and you are seated listening to me and you really cannot tell me in one sentence why you are alive, you do not know. It's a serious reason. It is worth it to go for a retreat and say, Lord, why am I here? I'm tired of clapping for other people's vision. I'm tired of clapping for other people's destiny. He said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it has been written of me to do your will. Not everybody will be a pioneer of a ministry. Not everybody will be a man of God. But even if you are serving in ministry, you should be able to know what your assignment is there and commit yourself. This is the ideology you must have about life this is the first subject we are dealing with tonight about life these are facts of life that you must know you must live with eternity in view as you go back go and take an inventory on your life what are the things that i spend my 24 hours doing separate them into two majors and minor you will be surprised to see how much of your time you give to the major things the things that matter that matter we can spend seven hours sitting and daydreaming about rubbish we can spend 10 hours watching movies and films and there's nothing wrong with that but learn to major on the major and minor on the minor by the time you switch them your life is going to be vanity I will never spend my time on something that does not weigh in the scale of eternity i will never waste my time it has nothing to do with me being a preacher you will never see me sit down gossiping about people talking about another man's ministry tearing down people that's not my business there is an urgency the king's business requires haste there is a lot i have i have too many things on my mind to do there are souls to save. There are sick bodies to heal. There are devils to cast out. They must fly out of people's bodies into where they came from. There are lives that must be changed. There are impartations that must happen to people. I occupy my life doing that. There are songs to write. There are visions to bring. There are revelations to bring to the body. There's too much to occupy me to waste my life in bitterness and anger and all of and this this competitive thing people do around please get out of that thing occupy don't let satan give you a job that god did not give you are we blessed oh so teach us to number our days i want you to leave this place tonight with a new paradigm about life this is a better revelation 
than just legalistically trying to tell people stop this stop that stop sin when you give them a revelation about the reality of life the fact that it is a gift and a trust it will compel them to think and say what am i doing with my life as you go back home go and sit down and think about your life if you've never done it please switch off your phone and just sit down or wake up in the middle of the night and just sit down and say where am i going to okay i'm 35 i'm 45 i'm 50 i'm 20 i'm 17 i'm 10 what am i doing with my life number two the second discussion that we're going to be looking at i want to teach you an understanding about people if you want to live effectively you must understand people these keys i'm teaching you will make you master effective living you will live so effectively your understanding about people there are certain things you need to know about people for you to live effectively if you do not know this you will fail bitterly in life ready number one is what i call the fundamental principles of human relation the fundamental principle of human relation as far as dealing with people we're on another subject now understanding about people we've looked at understanding about life your understanding about people is an ideology that needs to change for you to live effectively write this down i'll keep drumming it to your head till you get it the highest psychological need this is what i call the fundamental principle of human relations the highest psychological need of man is the need to feel loved the need to feel valued and the need to feel important any man christian muslim atheist buddhist the follower of baha'i confucius whatever all the religions in the world every man today living on the surface of the earth has an inner craving the greatest psychological craving of any man is the need to be loved the need to be valued and the need to feel important the moment you live your life violating this law you are going to go through a lot of struggles with people are we together now um, let me use Amaka come let me use you anybody come These are two people. Where are you from? Anambra State. Anambra. Where are you from? Delta State. Delta. This is Anambra. This is Delta. I need somebody from the north. North? Be sure you are from the north. Don't just stand up and... Okay, yeah, Sam, you can come. Watch this. You can, you can stay here. These people have diverse cultures. Diverse ways of living. But can I tell you the truth? embedded in every one of them from delta from anambra from kaduna state embedded in every one of them they crave for it they will fight for it is the ultimate determinant of their attachment to people the need to feel loved the need to feel valued everybody wants to feel loved that sense of love that sense of value you know what it means to be valued i've told us but write it again to be valued means to be given an impression that you are not easily replaceable that's what it means to be valued by the time you live your life and you master degrading people and trivializing their worth you become an enemy to effective living so if i live my life watch this if every time i meet amaka all i keep doing to her is to make her feel she's of no worth are you getting the point now i keep making her feel bad i keep making her feel you are nobody you are non-entity let me tell you something she will hate me she will fight me 
she will resent me every time i am coming towards her i become a reflection of pain are you getting me every time people are celebrating her and she sees joshua selman coming she will hate it she will leave that environment are you getting the point now because my presence is always derogatory to her person if i meet this guy right now and i look i say i'm richer than you you are nothing i push him away and make him look like you have to earn certain things to belong to my class and i push him away i devalue him are we together i make him not feel important the danger of that is that i will never be able to be friends with him some of you can never have friends and by extension husbands and wives because your attitude violates the fundamental principle of relationships your presence always makes people feel they are nothing there's something about your ideology that mocks you trivialize the efforts of people there are ladies like that every time you see another lady you cannot see what is nice there is a beautiful flower your eyes cannot see it this is a lady that is beautiful you can't see it you just look and say kai is this shirt iron or not why must your life tilt towards devaluing people that sense of cynicism is destroying your potential for effective living you must train yourself to always make people feel love when i come to sam and i say sam i love you you are a great person i need you to survive i won't harm you with words from my mouth i love you i need you to and when sam is trying to say ah no i'm not qualified to be to your class i say sam if there is nothing that is common to all of us we were all made from dust there is a common ground and i love you you don't need to do anything to end my love i appreciate you i know you are growing and i make sam feel important when he sings i say sam there is an anointing on you i know i'm anointed but i cannot but acknowledge the grace upon you do you think sam will want to be around me because anytime he's around me that sense of value is on there are many of you brothers you have destroyed the lives of sisters because every time you see them you are, your your mouth is like a razor blade you tear people down kai this girl true true let's tell the truth she's not fine kai you may be laughing as if you you are fine see it there are brothers like that and some are, are, are audacious this is a lady who is trying to gather herself what like a broken plate her emotional her em, the emotional self worth of her of her person is fragile she's gone through a family that did not believe in her now she came to koinonia or to any um congregation of god's people and she's hoping she will find a place where she can heal and be strong and one arrogant carnal brother now comes to smash that thing on the ground and says i'm telling you to your face you are anointed oh i won't deny that one but find it now you have you have no. thank you if that is part of your life you are not living effectively because the reason why somebody is dying is because you are alive and god is watching god is watching you cannot come and destroy god's precious creation are you getting what i'm saying now yeah never make people feel bad when you are there no you live effectively when you understand this component of people sisters may god give you a husband who thinks like this somebody who you come back home and he can appreciate you when you cook he doesn't look and say why is there four meat i thought you used to put five say no i thank god i just came back from somewhere and my husband's wife beat him i thank god for a woman like you never giving me headache and she's saying i'm sorry i shouted at you that day say no we are humans not that you're a bad man you say yes you shouted no if you understand people 
Let me tell you, you will become a people magnet. It will be like charm. You become desirable by even your enemies because you have sustained the component that attracts people. The, the excellency of your ideology is such that everyone wants to be like you. Why is everybody running away from you? It may be because there is something about your life. Are we together now? You think they are running away because you are poor. Not necessarily. Trust me, not necessarily. There is something about your life that violates their sense of self-worth. I need you to serve. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. Very important. Bless you. Bless you. You greet people. When you come, you greet people. They don't just come and say, Apostle, how are you? Say, hey, I'm fine. Courtesy. Are we together? The highest psychological need of man is the need to feel loved, the need to feel valued, the need to feel important. The second thing you need to know about people to live effectively. Ready? You must be aware of the inconsistencies and the ever-changing nature of man. Oh, I teach you wisdom tonight. Be aware of the inconsistencies and the ever-changing nature of man. Expect people to change. Expect people to change. Whether for the good or for the worst. If you do not factor this, you will die of hypertension as you live in your life. expect people to change factor this as you deal with people how many people come back with shock i used to know this lady when she was nothing very humble very loving now because she bought bmw x series now she's arrogant expect people to change incorporate it so that you are never shocked there are few things about people that surprise me because i factor it there are people who used to greet me years ago they will see me and greet me but now I see them and you see there's this unconscious, I'm also a man of God now. And I just see them as I expected it. Carry your wahala. There's one song, owner of evil load. Carry your load. Now I don't mean that for you, but I mean, come on. I reject any load that God didn't give me. Carry your wahala, your mindset and your village, whatever, go with it. I don't want trouble. Our not understanding that change is something to be expected even in people. Is what surprises us so as at the time you ask the lady out she was a charming sleeping beauty lovely lady she would greet you it was because she was not exposed now some exposure has come and one day she challenges you and you say me when did you change if you don't factor it you will die like mere men how how many times do we expect people to remain the way we've always known them let me tell you if you want to live effectively incorporate this people are inconsistent they are ever changing somebody will say i love you today tomorrow he will say crucify him let it not shock you factor it and you will be free so that if your best friend today turns and stabs you at the back I, 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 some, some years ago, I managed one issue. One guy liked one lady, one good Christian lady, and there was one middleman who was trying to process the whole relationship. And in the process of trying to uh, do the procession, I don't know how the thing worked, and the guy started, you know, was possessing his canaan for himself, and so on and so forth. And he found out that they were spending time together, and the returns that would have come from the whole, I mean, the guy was not, nothing was happening. And at a point, he just said, look, this lady says she doesn't like you. Long and short. I've just been afraid of telling you, but now see it as hot as it is. And then a few weeks, they were all going out. And then, of course, you can imagine how that relationship too will end. Praise the Lord. But the idea is that when was the last time some of you, listen, as you are sitting down right here, you are bitter and you are depressed because people changed. Your father changed when his salary came, when his arrears of 10 years came no more prayers remember when people used to come and pray they forced you to wake up in the night and do night vigil you killed everything flying around your house till that money came 
when it arrived your father became himself he apologized to the family if i've offended anybody if that's what is stopping the money i apologize and you were convinced my goodness daddy has changed all of a sudden the money came and found that there is no change that has happened listen learn this about people and you will win the inconsistencies and the ever-changing nature man the only thing that god guaranteed about man is that he will change people change when they are under pressure that's why let me tell you something i say this thing especially because we are predominantly young people when you see somebody that thing you call love at first sight be careful because if you say you love me have you seen me when i'm angry have you seen me when i'm hungry do you know whether i snore do you know whether i'm dirty when you say you love me means you love everything about me oh i love you i love you calm down my mother is a witch i love you i love you like that calm down our our refusal to understand people listen i'm giving you wisdom that will guarantee your reigning you will live effectively know that people change are you getting what i'm saying now how many pastors expect their subordinates not to change and they say i know you you are like a son to me you came into this church as an arm robber see what god used my anointing to do in your life and you are the very person who wants to divide my church into half <laughs> people must change for the good or for the worst I have factored this in my life let me tell you there is almost nothing anybody around me does that surprises me i may just be alarmed what kills people what causes high blood pressure is the shock the shock i didn't expect this person to change come on <laughs> i give you a key that will make you live effectively are you learning this When you expect people to change and you factor it, you are never surprised. That means when you are designing your life, you design it incorporating the fact that people can change. That way, you will never trust any human being above God, no matter what they tell you. I will fall inside the well for you. I will, a train will kill me for you. You are talking nonsense. Let an arm robber knock the door. You will see the ever-changing nature and the inconsistencies of people. There are pastors that before they got money, they were preaching certain messages. Is that true? When money came, business class, first class, five-star hotel. Ah! They said, so life can be lived at a higher level. And that thing altered their messages. And the members said, Kai, I'm disappointed. Don't be disappointed. People change. Walk out with this today. And you can shake hands with your best friend who stabbed you at the back and say i know i offended you and you laugh you say i've learned to factor in the ever changing nature so when a guy walks to you somebody who says if i don't marry you just come and carry my dead body and two weeks later he says i'm not doing again you will start asking him what happened what is on your head people change so you factor it in your heart listen this is the antidote to consistent disappointment. I will give you a job. What level are you now? 400 level. I promise you, I'm now the DG of this and that. And then you come after that time and say, even your father have not given him a job. Talk more of it. Walk out of this office. And you say, ah, ah. All the while, when they are prophesying in miracle service, you never drop prayer requests of job. Because to you, you think it's a done deal. That man promised me. And we are saying, don't put your strength in man. You are not hearing. Until he sends you away, you will rush with the prayer request. And come and drop it. Oh God, a job. Listen, I will never trust man above God. Never. I don't care what my father, your father may let you down. Your mother, your best friend. What's the other part? But Jesus. That's right. Your boss. Your lecturer. 
your project for Jesus your certificate your husband Nigeria hallelujah understand the inconsistencies and the ever changing nature of men this is the key to not living in bitterness I, I love this person so much and he went behind me and stabbed my back factor it and rest Jesus never said on the cross disciples where are you you left me he didn't have time for that John thank you for coming take care of my mother for me he never woke up and said you Peter you uh, um, Nathaniel Nathaniel you that I saw you close to a tree no that's what many of you do number three under understanding people you must understand what I call the motivation of the natural man if you want to live with people you must know what motivates the natural man and I want to tell you now there are three things that motivate the natural man fear greed and self-centeredness factor that as you live with people the natural man is only driven by three things one fear two greed three self-centeredness hmm. if you don't know this you will be deceived the concept of celebrity really does not exist people only celebrate you to the degree to which they found something in your life that is valuable to them the day they don't find it they will dump you for the next thing the natural man is motivated friendship in the world fraternities and associations are ultimately motivated by fear by greed and by self-centeredness watch this i taught the school of ministry three kinds of people with respect to there are three categories of people in life with respect to relationships and let me just bring it out and teach us watch this the first category of people that you will relate with in your life are those who don't love you or love you believe in you clap for you only because of what you carry not who you are they don't love you because of who you are they love you because of what you have that they need so desperately so your presence represents the availability of that thing so they keep loving you for the sake of what they want are you getting what i'm saying now when you see an anointed man and you run around him and say you are anointed you really do not love him you only love what his presence brings in your life the day i was telling the school of ministry students the day we do two koinonia services and you don't sense any anointing you sense the service go bad many of you say i said it hey the charm the charm has scattered how many listen how many of you seated here if i'm preaching right now and in your presence a charm god forbid but let's assume that i'm carrying a real charm and it just falls out here let me tell you some of you who shouted i love you joshua selman you are my father you are my mother you are my uncle you are all of this at once at once you are the ones who go and call the police and say something is wrong let's let's join the president in fighting corruption <laughs> in nigeria Ninety percent of the people who will come to your life who will love you and call you names only love what you carry not you if you are not aware of this the crowd will deceive you when men clap for you they are clapping for what you carry that they need even if you still have it the day they don't need it you will dump it look at what we have done for Nitel. Nitel that labored for nigeria for many years look at what we have done to railway look at what we have done to typewriters Look at what we have done to cafes. Look at what we have done to Nokia 3310. That's an example. 
there was a time that represented our obsession is the same thing you will do to your android device in the next 10 years is the same thing you will do to your tab you will throw it away young children like this don't even know what a typewriter is whether electric or manual they don't know it are we together yeah so when you see people celebrating you don't get carried away that they are admiring you you say i'm a superstar joking joking you are only a commodity that is desperately needed and people are leeching on you to eat their pound of flesh while they can for as long as what you carry is needed by them they will keep loving you the first category of people you meet many of us are under deception right now that's what i teach the leaders i hear many of you come and greet and, and, and i'm not saying you should do it Oh, I want to thank my father, Apostle Joshua Selman, and I'm just looking at you while you are saying it. I want to appreciate the head of the department, prayer band, and everybody shouting, Oh, the day you try to get people filled with the Holy Spirit, and you lay hands and lay your legs and nothing happens. They'll start saying, this department is like we're backsliding. The, the prayer, the anointing on this department is not as strong as it used to be before. Gradually, gradually. Listen, when you know this, you will celebrate people but you will learn to love yourself because ultimately you are your biggest fan at least you are the one that trusts yourself by the time you stop loving yourself and allow people love you the day they leave you will die of loneliness Job was left alone and he said i know my redeemer leave it all i've lost everything but i will love myself Many of us are here right now. How many of you started fellowships and started groups? Or maybe were pastors of fellowships. And as at the time you were working with the people, most of the people you were grooming and building were not spiritual people. But now all of them have revelation. And everybody pushes you away and you are feeling disappointed. There's no throne for you again. My brother, save yourself headache. I'm giving you freedom. Go and find a way of motivating yourself and keep loving God. For as long as people see something in you that they want. I asked the school of ministry students a question and I'm going to ask you to prove that the love of man is sensual and carnal. How many of you tell me the name of two imbeciles you can remember? Ready? Those are the ones that have nothing to offer to you. You can't even remember their face. When was the last time when you visited them to charity, you only visited them to show the world you are doing well, you are all of that. They poured saliva on you, thank God. How long can you endure that? You just endured it for the moment. That's to prove to you our love is principally self-centered. Number two, the second category of people you will meet in your life are those who do not love you. Don't confuse this. The first category, they love you. They celebrate you, but the motivation is for themselves. The second category, they don't love you. They don't believe in you. But because there is an enemy they have to confront. And they need your cooperation to destroy that bigger enemy. They will come into a momentary partnership with you to help them fight that bigger enemy. When the enemy is defeated, they return to themselves. Are we together? A funny example. During crisis post-election violence or religious crisis how many of you love people that smoke ego how many of you love people that do this but the moment there is crisis what happens because those guys are the ones who put the headband and go to fight for christians you now motivate them and say my children go <laughs> do you love them no do you believe in them no but there is now a bigger enemy you don't care their church in fact sometimes you even give them some money and say hey, take minerals you know what they will do with that money but you are saying take minerals right and you tell them please as you are protecting come around my house make sure that everything is working well do you love them no do you believe in them you have warned them two weeks before the crisis they should not come near your house you will shoot them if you see them now because you are afraid that a bigger enemy will kill you you are now using them momentarily to help you fight that bigger enemy and afterwards, you hate them back. 
when you want to move to a new place a new house you want to find out are there christians there now you may hate catholics you may hate anglicans you may hate pentecostals but because you want to be at least in a place of safety you now say are they christians you don't know what what they believe if they say your neighbor is a christian the other one is a christian you say ah i'm happy immediately you enter that problem has been solved now you hear this guy praying in the night you say mr man i'm here i will warn you you it's your church that prays like that continue you see that the difference has come you needed them momentarily do you understand what i'm saying now how many people come into partnership with you just because they want to fight a bigger enemy i've seen people who don't love me they don't believe in me they many of them may have said a lot of things about me but when certain inevitable diseases came upon their lives oppressions they saw people appearing day and night and telling them you would die they tried everything they would do right and then they would now come and you see them say man of god honestly kai may god bless you you are doing a serious work and i can discern that these people they will be then people to stab me but because there is a bigger enemy they need to come into partnership with my anointing and solve the problem after which they return back to their mode if you do not know this about people you will be deceived you will suddenly see your enemy at peace with you he's at peace with you because there is a bigger enemy learn this and be wise are we together the third category of people that you will meet in your life are those who will love you for who you are they will die with you they love you more than your money they love you more than your anointing they will be the last set of people to give up on you brothers and sisters let me tell you something i told the school of ministry students yesterday and they were shocked if you find 10 of these people in your life you are the luckiest person who has lived don't answer it now answer me when you are 60 years old if you find 10 of this third category of people like ruth to naomi who will say your god will be my god if you fail i fail with you if they mock you they mock us together you may never find those people i pray for you may may that person be your husband or your wife because if if that third category have you not seen husbands that left their wives when there was trouble there was one man who gave birth to six children who was looking for a boy first twins girls second twins girls he said let's try again third twins and he ran away because he could not find. i mean he was on news they had to look for him and see him standing as if he was not the one responsible for the children that's what people do a man can be that self-centered to run away from his own children and his own wife if you learn these three things i shared with you you have mastered people maybe i'll just talk on one more area and then we'll round up this i may stop here and we'll continue um, the next time your understanding about failure mm. make sure you get this you must have an understanding about failure about setbacks about challenges for you to be able to live effectively ready right let's fly on your path to success failures challenges setbacks are inevitable write it down on your path to success you must fail you must have challenges you must have setbacks if you do not know this you will be discouraged you will die champions in life are not people who were not confronted by failures they are those who knew the things that i'm teaching you now your failures are doorways to lasting and sustainable success write it down your failures are doorways to lasting and sustainable success I want to change your mindset about your failures now i sense god ministering to people very personally because there are lots of people that have failed and you need somebody to explain to you what is happening in your life 
your failures are what? The door, the very door that opens you up to success is called failure. That's the name of the door. If you reject that door, you reject success. I do not know any successful man who has lived in this life who has not failed. Let's see what James told us. James chapter 1 verse 2 and 3. Write this down while they project that scripture. Failure is a priceless asset. Failure is a priceless asset. Nothing can buy it. Failure is a priceless asset. Everyone say, it. Failure is a priceless asset. James chapter 1, we'll read 2 to 3. Ready? Let's read together as projected. 1 to read. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. See, he's saying rejoice. The same way you rejoice if somebody gives you a check. He says when you fail, don't cry. Rejoice. Knowing this, this is why you rejoice. That the trying of your faith worketh what? patience let's look at verse 4 it says verse 4 please but let patience have his perfect work and then <laughs> read on sorry about the media but you get the point failure is a priceless asset because it teaches you patience there is no other way to learn patience on your path to success number two failure teaches you discipline discipline when you hear people brag and they are arrogant on the path to success, just leave them. Failure will bring them to a point of discipline, I guarantee you. Failure brings humility. When you fail on the path to success, it brings humility. When you hear a man talking around, bragging, my money, my education, my this, is because they have not failed. Give them room come to meet them 10 years later and they will see you even as a millionaire and say good afternoon sir and you are like ah, ah my brother what happened to you failure teaching men humility failure teaches you compassion for others because you have a foretaste of how hard it is right the reason why many people are quick to castigate others you are quick to look at a drunkard and castigate him. You are quick to look at a lady and say, you are a terrible lady. You are an embarrassment to everybody. It's because you have not failed. When people fail, they develop compassion for others. We do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Why? Because he was in every way like us, tempted. The only, let me tell you something about failure. Failure is a sign that you have started moving to the realm of success. You never fail if you are not moving. Failure confirms that you are moving. Ah! Let me tell you something. I will never listen to a man who has not failed. I don't care what you have accomplished. If you have not failed, you don't have a message for me. You don't have the balance. Failure gives you balance. People who have never failed are arrogant. When you see somebody just comes into the anointing, you hear him talk, God forbid. Can you imagine? I'm embarrassed. I don't know why pastors don't have a crowd. I mean, in three days, we have grown from two people to 20. Just let him continue. Don't tell him anything. Continue. You come back after one year and you say, I don't know why people will trust you today and next week they won't trust you again. Failure is teaching him a good lesson. At the end of three years, he says, look, it doesn't matter crowd or no crowd, serve God. Failure has taught him. Look at the transition from a pompous and an arrogant person to a disappointed fellow to one who has stepped into it. Micah chapter 7 verse 8 is an encouragement for someone 
Rejoice not over me, my enemies. Though I fall, yet I will rise again. We hate failure because of the mockery that comes with it. We hate failure because of the embarrassment that comes with it. Now listen, this failure I'm talking about is not just failure caused by witches and wizards. This is a necessary and sufficient condition for you to become successful. You must fail. Rejoice not against me, O oh my enemy. He says, when I fall, what will happen? Everyone prophesy to yourself, I shall rise. I shall rise. Say, when I, fall. when I fall. He never said, if I fall. <laughs> he never said, if I fall. He said, when I fall, I shall rise. He said, when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. I like to see people who have failed in life. They are the ones who are champions. Failures and challenges are only indications that your current level of understanding has reached its limit and you will need to upgrade. Hear this. Your failure in life is only showing you that the principles that you know have exhausted their validity and can no longer take you beyond that reach. Are you getting what I'm saying now? When you fail, it's a sign that what you know, what you understand, what you believe has reached its limit. Meaning you will need another kind of knowledge, another kind of understanding to pick you and continue with you. That's what it means. Failures are the ultimate motivators for success. Oh, how true. Nothing motivates you to succeed like failing. Failing will motivate you more than counseling. It will motivate you more than encouragement. When you fail, in that cave of Adullam, like David, there was a time David ran away from Saul. You would have called him a failure when he sat down at the cave of Adullam. It was at that point, certain things began to happen in his life. Is God speaking to us? Failure prunes and edits your relationships. You never know who people are until you fail. Failure edits your relationships. It takes away psychophants from your life. It, 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 it leaves the remnant in your life who love you truly for who you are. Are we together? Listen. Let me tell you something. Failure has monetary value. Failure is that needed. In itself, you can become rich by failing. There is a level to which you fail so much in life. Your failure becomes the testament that helps other people to jump that path. And they will pay you for it. So your failures are not a waste. Remove the shame, the stigma, and the embarrassment that come with failure, but treasure the experience. Is God speaking to us tonight? Take away the shame. I know that failure comes with shame. I know what it means to organize a program and publicize, and in your vision you saw an overflow. But then, Two hours into the program, that's when the 11 person comes into the meeting. It may look like failure, but at that point, it can give you an opportunity. Remove the shame. Remove the embarrassment. Take away all those things, but preserve the experience. Because the day a crowd comes, you will glean from that experience to become your instrument of thanksgiving. When you see preachers roll on the floor and thank God, they know what God did to them when no one was watching them. Are you getting the point now? Yeah. How do you deal with failure? Number one, never be ashamed of it. Don't let any man make you ashamed of failure. Honest failure that happened on your path to success. No. No. 
Learn from them and rise to a realm of success. Learn from them. You never conquer failure until you learn the lesson from it. If you do not, you will keep repeating it for ages. You conquer failure when you receive failures. Listen. Listen to me. Watch this. Watch this. Let me tell you something. Failure is like a parcel from the gate of success to your current level. A parcel contains a letter in it. That letter is the secret to your continuity in that part. But it comes as failure. Just like you send a messenger with a letter. When you open it, you will see in it the secret to continue your journey. Failure is like a compass. It has in it a road map and a compass. When you get to a point in your life where you fail, check well, there is a parcel. Open it up and it will tell you turn left and you begin to move and you continue your journey. You can ignore the parcel out of shame and you never will get to the place of success. One scripture and then we'll run away. But let me just give you two scriptures. Job 14 from verse 7 to 9. The Bible says there is hope for a tree. Oh, I bring a message of hope for people who have failed. There are people who have really failed. There are some people who probably wrote jam or wrote post UME or wrote other things. There are people who may have to spill over, stay an extra year. There are those who have finished, you graduated, you paid the price, but there is no job. All these things look like indications of failure. Tonight, I want you to go to the treasure where you keep the most valuable things in your life and pick your failures and add it to your treasures. Otherwise, you are missing a lot. Don't throw your failure away. It's a priceless gem. Media, please give us Amos chapter 3 verse 12. Let me give you two scriptures. Job 14, 7 to 9 and then Genesis 50 verse 20. Remember what Joseph told his brothers. He said you meant it for evil but God has turned it around for my good, for the salvation of others. In other words, you wanted to sell me out of jealousy. It doesn't matter what made you fail. It may be your personal cause. It may be envy. It may be whatever. It doesn't matter. Verse 12. Okay, we have it. Now, read this very interesting scripture. He said, Thus saith the Lord, this is a message of hope for somebody tonight. As the shepherd taketh out of the mouth of the lion two legs or a piece of ear. Look at this. A lion has devoured a sheep to a point that it ate the whole body. All that was left is two legs and ear. Yet the shepherd still fought to recover it. Because he still felt that there is still hope for that sheep. This is what the Bible is saying. He said in the same way a shepherd by the time it has eaten the stomach down to everything, there is no life again. But the shepherd said, I will not give up on this sheep. This sheep can come back. Because if you can have an ear to hear the word, faith comes by hearing. And if you can have your feet to take steps of obedience, there is no situation that cannot change. It says the same way a shepherd, you would imagine that after a lion has devoted that's the apex of failure at the mouth at the eyes at the heart at the lungs and the shepherd said i know that there are only two legs left and one ear that's all i need to get that sheep back an ear to hear the word of the lord and a feet to take steps if you can continue the journey and not give up you will arrive who is god speaking to tonight what brought you to give up you started very well simply because you did not see results many of you are about to give up i know that you have 10 carryovers right now you are even on probation you are on your way out you are not as bad as this but they said the shepherd will not give up who is god speaking to you have written jam for seven times everybody around you is telling you your god is not alive this your Christianity thing is making you an idiot. There are people who even think it is because you are spiritual that you are failing. Just allow God to finish what he's doing in your life. When he beautifies you, when he adores you, when he makes a masterpiece out of you, then men will know that the rejected stone 
while you are paying the price they will laugh at you don't worry don't hate them while you are going through the valley of the shadow of death while it looks like the sun will never shine i want you to know that if there is night there is day it says and the evening came and the morning came if you see the evening they were tied together you can't see evening without morning if you see evening it means morning is on its way coming he'll lead me and guide me to the city of papa he'll lead me and guide me to my place of destiny he'll lead me and guide me to the city of papa he'll lead me and guide me to my place of destiny listen your failure is your passcode to enter the gates of success when the gate is about to open it to say show me show me the code and you say see my scars there is a scar i didn't just come i cried i had times of discouragement i had times when i never thought the sun would shine but here i'm standing i almost gave up I was right at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see That's what God is speaking to someone here My problems held me bound Depression But he kept me So I would let go 37 years And they've told you madam let us just go and get pregnant and have a child at least Listen, change your interpretation about failure. Tonight, as you pray, thank God for your failures. It's made me wiser. It's made me better. It's made me understand people. Now I can reach out to others and say, Sam, you can make it. You are not the only one who is there. When David was in the cave of Adullam, the Bible says there came to him people who were weak, people who were in debt people who were depressed and he made warriors out of them it's in the place of your failure some of you will get your husband you will get a godly man because there is nothing to desire from you and somebody comes genuinely run away from people who show you success without failure the next time you see a great man beg him to show you his cars not his crown his cars the symbol of royalty in the school of greatness is not crown. Crown is an evidence to follow us. Leaders lead with scars. They lift up their clothes and say, see my scars. There were times I was tightened for years. It looked like the heavens were closed. Nothing was working in my life. Let me tell you. I've told many of you about my situation. The first crusade we went for, we were few. God did great things. We were few. We were in debt, but there was an anointing. I would have given up and said, God, please. Today, you are benefactors of endurance, a product of pain. Listen, I bring a message to someone. You want to live effectively? Master the art of enduring pain until you overcome. You can weary pain. You can weary failure failure can salute you and say you qualify to pass are we together i won't give up lord i won't give up i'll keep pressing on till my answer comes i won't give up lord i won't give up I'll keep holding on. You went to lay hands on a sick body and they embarrassed you. They drove you out of a house. You went to pray innocently. Your word of knowledge was not correct and they drove you out. They called you a false prophet. Don't worry. You know you are real. Just leave. They can embarrass you. Just go. 
You took your CV and they sought that class and they insulted you. They say all these prostitutes that roam around university and buy certificates. No problem. Just leave. A day will come. It will be a privilege for them to shake your hands. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Listen. In Koinonia, we don't run away from people who have failed. This is a place where there are pastors who run away from people who fail. When a drummer cannot play drums well, he says, drive this guy out of my church. Go and look for somebody in Lagos who can play and then bring the person. Right? There are pastors who cannot train people who have failed to become great men of God. We want ready-made. Great leaders are those who can endure and make wonders out of failures. Hallelujah. There are all kinds of people you would have thought they would fail. Right here in Koinonia, there are people who have gone through things that it looks like the morning will not rise. I'll never forget one of our own here, Mama. I remember when he was disowned by his family on account of his faith. Disowned completely. They drive you and say, that's it, go. Live your life. I remember him coming and smiling. But today, look what God has made out of his life. And on the, that failure today has become an instrument for his anointing. That failure today has become an instrument of his grace. Sister, you don't have to give yourself cheap because of failure. Go through it. Pass through it. There are some cops you will never pray them away from your life. I promise you. Master or Father, if it be thy will, take this cup off me. And God says, uh -uh, you must drink this one. If you want to stay near me, you must drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism. There are some things you can never pray away. You pray for grace to pass through them. Isaiah 43 verse 1 and 2, fear not, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, it will not overwhelm you. He said, when you walk through the fire, you will run. While it is burning you, you will walk through the fire. He says, I'll be with you. Have you walked through fire enough to have compassion for people? That's the reason why when I come in and I see people seated outside, I, I, I see people standing in the rain, my heart is grieved because I know that I do not even, based on human parameters, I should never be trusted with people like this. I don't just walk around bragging and saying, this is the man of God, all of you shift, you came late, sit down outside. It's, no, 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 no. It touches my heart. Many times you see me sit down and I bend my head. Many people don't know there is a very soft side to me. Many times I'm fighting tears when I see what God is doing. I come for the miracle service and the testimonies from one region over the other. I know where God brought me from. If I never failed, I would have been an arrogant person. Not with the kind of anointing. I had to fail to manage this kind of anointing. It takes failure to cap this kind of anointing and still respect people. Are you getting what I'm saying? The reason why there are many young ministers moving around, bragging and moving. Just don't try to pray for them. Just leave them. If it is that gate, I promise you, you must pass through the door of failure. Expect people to laugh at you is normal. They laugh at you as a consolation to their failures. Because they have refused to move forward. Whenever they see you trying, they are intimidated. So when you fail, it's a comfort to them. And so they will amplify it so that they can derive joy that it is not doable. But when you smash that record, them together with the world will stand in ovation. The reason why you reward great men is not just their result. You, they are testaments of endurance. They have gone through what people have never gone through. If I never failed, I would not know how to fast. There are times in my life I fasted dry for days because I needed to knock on the doors of heaven. It's not just that I just love God. Situations push me like the cave of Adulam. The first language that miracles, signs and wonders, healings speak is the language of God. But the first thing God is saying through miracles is, I am not the author of sin, sickness, and pain. That's the first language of God 
that miracles reveal the moment you experience a miracle in your life it's a language God is saying through it that I am not the author of sin I am not the author of sickness and I am not the author of pain John 10 10 says the thief cometh not in other words you never find him around except to do this to steal but for to steal and to kill and to destroy but Jesus made clear his manifesto he said but I am come that ye may have life and that you have it more abundantly so when you experience a miracle in that miracle God is speaking and what he's saying number one is that by this miracle let it be confirmed to you that I'm not the author of sin I'm not the author of sickness please listen you will never open up your heart for healing if you believe God is the cause of sicknesses you will never open up your heart for healing if you believe God is the source of pain God through a miracle is speaking a language my son my daughter you came with a door that is closed now I have opened that door it's a message to you that I am not the author of sin of sickness and of pain two scriptures quickly mark chapter 1 please give us 38 to 45 very interesting reading mark chapter 1 i just want to put this foundation and speak the things that the lord has asked me to speak to us through his word and then we'll pray there are already miracles happening already miracles are happening mark chapter 1 38 we're reading down to 45 listen he says and he said unto them let us go into the next towns that i may preach there also for there came i forth 39 and he preached in their synagogues throughout all galilee and cast out devils did you see that next verse please and there came a leper beseeching him and kneeling down to him just like many of you have come to find out lord is this how my life will end or do you have another plan here's his reply to you he's saying he kneeling down to him and saying unto him if thou will thou can make me clean in other words i know you have the ability i just need to verify your willingness and this is what jesus says 41 and jesus moved with compassion put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him read on i will be thou clean i will be thou clean when you read from verse 45 down to 45 you will see that the man was healed so miracles are languages this is what jesus is saying through the miracle i will i will you know that i am but it's important for you to know that i will do it you know i can make you blessed but it's another thing for you to believe i will do it the bible says what things soever thou this thou desire he said when thou prayest believest that thou receivest it and thou shall have it miracles are a language james 1 17 james 1 17 i tell you the presence of god is so strong i'm just seeing a fog outside i'm not even seeing people that's all i'm seeing like a fog thick fog all the overflows that's what i'm seeing outside and i believe that that glory is doing something in people hmm. no matter where you are whether you are sitting in the gutter on the fence on a tree wherever it truly does not matter now I know that it's difficult to believe that because you're outside you think you are not seeing me directly it's not necessary James 1 17 everyone please read one to read every good gift uh-huh and every perfect gift is from above can mean anywhere so God clarifies coming down from who because there are spiritual wickedness in heavenly places so God says no so so you are not confused that I just said above it comes down from the father of light 
in whom there is no variableness neither shadow of turning he won't say this today and do this tomorrow so every miracle you will receive some of you have already received is a language you must not only experience it but you must discern the language God is saying look my son my daughter this dear family no matter how much you have cried and all of that he's telling you number one that know this because there are many of us here who are angry at God right now God you are the cause of my problems God you are the one who has not done this and that God is saying to tell you through the miracle that you will receive that he's not the author of pain he's not the author of the closed door say amen the second language that miracles speak the language of God spoken through miracles number two that I am a loving compassionate and merciful God the second language of God has revealed through miracles is that I am a loving comma compassionate and merciful God Matthew 35 verse 36 the love of God is a revelation that we must have listen 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 the little time I have walked with God I have been amazed I know that preachers have preached about the love of God I have also read about it but I am amazed at the love of God for me my revelation of the love of God only climaxes at the substitutionary work of Christ but there are things God has done here and now in my life that makes me know beyond the shadow of a doubt that God loves me and I, I'm not just speaking about general things oh you are breathing you are standing you are not in the mortuary all those things are general things that don't give personal revelations I have seen God arise to do things in my life that I, I, I sit back sometimes and I fight tears the love of God is a revelation that sponsors the release of power the love of God his compassion compassion is an adjective that qualifies love it, it attempts to add emotions to love when you add emotions to love it becomes compassion the expression of it revealed many times in scripture you see the Lord moved with compassion Matthew 30, 35 verse 36 okay we can't have it projected Matthew 35 36 Sorry, let me just open it here so that we'll hurry up. Oh, I think that's a mistake. I said 35 forgive me let's go to first John first John 4 19 I think I skipped scripture I made a mistake there pardon me it was a revelation of the compassion of Jesus first John 4 are we there 19 please let's read let's hurry up because of time one to read everybody we love him because he did what who first love us the Bible says God had commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners right in due season Christ died for us we love him because so what we are giving to him as love is only a reflection of his benevolence how that he gave it to us Psalms 145 I found a very interesting scripture you'd want to listen to Psalm 145, 8 and 9. Psalms 145, 8 and 9. Are we there? Psalm 
Psalms. It says, The Lord is gracious and full of what? Say it after me, full of compassion. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He says, slow to anger. The word there is patience. The New Testament calls it long suffering. Slow to anger and of great mercy. In fact, NIV says rich in love. Rich in love. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Slow to anger and of great mercy. Verse 9. The Lord is good to how many? The Lord is good to... He says, and his tender mercies are over all his works. So the condition to qualify for God's mercy is that you are created by him. The moment you are God's creation, you qualify. Powerful revelation. Mm. So regardless of what the cause of the sickness, regardless of what the cause of the challenge is, are we together now? Whether it was your fault, whether it was carelessness, it was a mistake, regardless of what it is, the Bible says in God's economy, there is a system where his mercy can work. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Do you know why we need mercy? Because there are people here. The challenges that you are facing right now in your life there are some of us the challenges are self-inflicted it, it, it was it was certain carelessness that gave room to demons they advise you not to sell the house you were looking for money immediately you sold the house and now you are houseless are we together that's carelessness but the mercy of God are we together you know sometimes we feel so bad and we feel can God show me mercy and rewind the hands of time and bring me out again the mercy of God was expressed in the parable of the prodigal son the Bible says the boy looked he was eating with pigs and says come the Bible says he came to himself and said how many hired servants have enough to eat in my father's house and I am here you know paraphrasing eating with pigs he said I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say father I have sinned against you and against heaven and I am not even worthy to be called your son but take me as one of your servants the Bible says while he was afar off the moment the father saw him he ran to him Put the signet ring. He didn't even say, stupid boy, you are finally back. Never discussed as, as far as is recorded in scripture. Never discussed. The only thing the father said is, my son was once was lost, but now he's found. I prophesy to someone here. Those who are concluding against you because the challenges in your life were caused by you. You know it was your fault. There is still a bailout system in God's economy. It's called the mercy of God. Tonight may that mercy reach you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Miracles are a revelation by God that he can give men a second chance again. God does not just have a second chance. As many chances as your sincerity can receive. The Bible says he's slow to anger. Slow to anger. The distance between where he is and his judgment, he slowed it down to give you room to tap into his mercy. There is no mercy in the realm of the spirit. Mercy is only in this realm. That's why you cannot pray for Satan to repent. Mercy is only a function of time and only those who walk with time can experience his mercy. So he tied mercy to the morning. He says your mercies are new every morning. Every 24 hours is renewed again. Ah, so that he showed you yesterday does not mean he cannot show you tomorrow. God is a merciful God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? There are families that are probably damaged here 
because of carelessness there are many families that are in financial bankruptcy they didn't listen when they would have listened there are many things we are humans is saying is, is a popular saying it says to err is human is that true all kinds of self-inflicted things but tonight there is a system in God I know you have even concluded yourself but there is a system after Samson's hair was taken away and they were using him to mock God in the temple they thought they plucked his eyes and the hair would never grow back again and Samson lifted up his voice to the God who was full of compassion and all of a sudden his strength returned and the Bible says he killed more people in his death I'm speaking to someone here they have not seen speed yet till you experience the mercy of God I know that for weeks now you've not been yourself but God is about to show you mercy and when he shows you mercy listen with mercy comes restoration naturally it's a sequence that follows don't sit down meditating on what you did wrong what you did right there is a provision for the mercy of God that's the language of a miracle so if when you were living in the world you got yourself involved with all kinds of things and then you had HIV now you are born again and you love God does God have to leave you like that to die no sir no sir no sir every time sin was cured sickness followed if God has forgiven you your sin that is spiritual he should be able to heal HIV do you know there are too many people who believe things are not working in their life because of certain things that have happened it's a different thing if you're a rebel and your heart is not broken and contrite because the mercy of God only follows and, and is applicable to those who have a broken and a contrite heart rebels never experience the mercy of God so when your heart is broken and contrite you're about to receive something that will change you hallelujah I was supposed to go for the job interview but I stayed overnight playing games and I slept I woke up by 10 the interview was over I've missed the job now the mercy of God can still speak for you I told you mercy comes with restoration if you were supposed to be employed three years ago even if they employ you now it's not restoration it's just advancement God must find a way of bringing the balance of three years so that when they check the graph of your life they don't see where the lag was that's restoration restoration is not progress restoration is an is an acceleration to catch up with where you would have been had the obstacle not come let's hurry up number three the third language that miracles speak signs and wonders now this is very important the third thing God is speaking tonight and always through miracles is I desire that you trust me enough to follow me wholly. When God brings miracles, he reveals his sovereignty, not just his love. So he tells you that I am a God of love and compassion, but I am also mighty. I calm the sea, I calm your life. I am worthy of your trust. I am worthy of your handing over your entire life to me listen I am convinced that any man who is afraid of handing over the management of his life now listen it's a very different ball game to be born again and it's another ball game entirely to hand over the management of your life to God there are many people who are born again you are praying in tongues but you have not handed over the management of your life to God come and learn of me he says take upon me he says my yoke is easy and my burden is light when it is killing you it's not of God hallelujah is God dependable enough for you to suck to hand over your whole marriage to him is God dependable enough for you to hand over your finances to him and his ways is God dependable enough for you to hand over your life with him do you know when you see people carry talisman 
carry charm, carry arrow, and all these things they move around with to aid protection. Do you know what they are saying? Even that act of stupidity is also a language. God, I don't trust you enough to depend on you. Mm. Esther said, if I perish, I perish. So when you see the sovereignty of God, quarter to shame, he steps in for you. It's a language. He's saying, I am that mighty. And as a result, hand over everything. You know, my concept of born again is not that you recited um, the Lord's prayer, salvation prayer. Reciting salvation prayer for me is not born again enough. You are born again when I look at your life experientially and I see the influence of the government of the kingdom in every aspect of your life. You give God academics and leave finances, you are not born again. You are a rebel in that area. Do you know Satan only attacks the area that is not covered by the kingdom of God? He cannot attack an area that is covered by the kingdom of God because you are numb to it. Your job is to apply the principles of the kingdom and leave God with the responsibility of manifesting his word. Our fears, our insecurities make us to come out of alignment. So when Jesus came, his message was repent, go back. You've trusted God concerning every other thing. When you thought the carryover will come, you saw it change. Now for job, you are trying to maneuver your ways. There is somebody somewhere and you keep disturbing him. Hundred missed calls is foolishness. It's a sign that you do not depend on God. Tonight I'm encouraging you by the miracles that God will do in this place he's speaking to you and saying can you not see that my life your life is safer with me than it is with you are we together protection people are afraid of dying listen the world is so vulnerable you don't have to be outside to die people have sat down inside about to take the first spoon of food and they collapsed and died mysteriously there are arrows that fly by day. You can only rebuke the ones you know. What of the ones you don't know? The safest place to be is under. The Bible says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. It says, Shall abide under the shadow of His wings. Like a hand covers the children. A hand, may, you can slaughter chicken. But not when children are under it. You can catch it when he's roaming around. But when a real responsible head has the children under it, you come near there, you lose your eyes for it. Have you seen a chicken that violent? Yeah. So God is a merciful God to you. But wait and see what he is to those who want to trouble you. That's why the psalmist said, How he said, Many are they that trouble me. Many are they that says, Where is your help? He said, But thou, O Lord, you are a what? Shield. First. God will shield you so that you calm down and then now turn and deal with anybody who is cursing him in your life. That's what will happen to somebody. I'm not motivating you. Believe me. If you believe in God and you believe in miracles, most people who believe in miracles have not settled down to discern what they mean. So all of a sudden, if in a few minutes now, the pain suddenly disappears. You don't just go back saying, wow, this, this koinonia is powerful. No, you have experienced the miracle, but you are not blessed by it because you have not discerned the language that comes from it. If God suddenly, by tomorrow, someone calls you and gives you a land, opens up a door for you, untold wealth within one week, if you just get excited and say, finally, I am rich, you have experienced the miracle, but you have not discerned it. You must know that God is speaking there and saying, it is my might. That one is not love you are seeing. That one is my might. I can compress time and bring your desire of one year to one week. Can you depend on me? That's why you see, most people, Pastor Jake, don't discern miracles. That's why they keep receiving miracles and their spiritual life keeps going down because they are receiving miracles and not discerning from it. I have learned from every dealing in, of God in my life a dimension of him. Like Mike said it so powerfully. There are names God wants you to know. Not the ones you've read in the Bible. 
he uses miracles to write his names upon your life so that by the time you are 30 years you are 40 years you have known certain names of God enough for you to build a foundation so that no nonsense will just come around and shake you if you have been born again for a while and you shake and fidget over everything there are some names of God you don't know are we together listen if by the grace of God let me just give you an analogy for many years we have been transporting people the bus services so you know by experience and by revelation that we are kind-hearted and we love you is that true now if on your way coming for koinonia sir somebody quickly rumors to you and says after service this night the way i've been feeling or apostle told me or i had a vision or i had a dream that we are not going to use bus this night the experience you have had with me will make you to trivialize that nonsense so when satan speaks and you pay attention it's because there is something about god you don't know so he will look at you and say hey, you better just be laying hands on your stomach because barrenness for sure is your own you are seeing it with everybody and at first you say no it's not my portion and then every day your whole prayer time you are laying hands on your and say oh god no i can't be barren i can't be barren it's no longer prayer you are only spiritualizing unbelief that one is not prayer again Do you know there are many things we call prayer that is not prayer that you are using prayer language does not mean it's prayer it's simply a spiritual way of communicating unbelief that's why it doesn't get answered to you you are consoling yourself but when it rises up is you are not asking god for anything you think you are asking oh god are you not the one who said this in the realm of the spirit what you are saying is god mercy i'm afraid so the only thing you get back is is mercy not answer because you thought you were requesting but God is listening to the voice of your spirit. You are, you, are ramp, you are wrapping scriptures just to vent fear. And God is saying, if you trusted me, you would have been quiet by now. Imagine that you are still praying for this chair to hold you by now. Pastor Alpha and Mike, you are just moving and then later I tap us out and say, ah, you stop praying, let's pray. Shabaladaba. Lord, in the name of Jesus, gravity is still working. I, I know this. Is that, is that are you, are you a, an intelligent physics student? No. That, there is a level to which we understand but there is a level to which it's unbelief and somebody will now ask you and say what you need is not prayer what you need is revelation and an encounter an experience that makes this real so someone will say jump up and match it when you match it and it does not fall do you know sometimes God does not call, cause trouble but he gives you strength by exposing you to your fears and then you find out that they didn't do you anything you thought you will die but you are still standing and so you laugh at what made you cry yesterday that's how we grow in the spirit doctor's report said two weeks you are still five years and you've not taken panadol they said this hepatitis is, is just at best oh if you reach 21 glory to god you are now 45. you were not thinking about it you have you reached 45 because you forgot about it now that you have started remembering you are wondering whether you reach 48 you will reach even 100 See, I have constructed my belief system such that, believe me when I tell you, there are some things that cannot enter my mind again. If I pray with you, you'll be very frustrated. Because while you are rapping and ranting requests and say, oh God, Baba, this and that and that. There are certain things you know about God that gives you rest. That's why I say, come on to me. You have been moving, you are going on to anybody. You are moving, he said, come on to me, all ye that are weary. What wearied you? Running around like a roaring lion. That's the spirit of Satan that makes people... God, he, listen, listen. It's Satan that moves around like a roaring lion. God only moves his eyes, not his body. The Bible said the eyes of the Lord run it to and fro. Satan has to physically run up and down. And you are now joining him. So he said, come on to me. This running around has worried you. I will give you rest. Have you seen somebody rest? When you say rest in peace, is the person moving around? Have you seen somebody dancing and you're about to bury him? You are wicked. You bury people who are quiet. Be still. Stillness, stability in the spirit is a great sign of faith. Turn and prophesy to someone and say, be still. 
Say your running around will not bring you the, the problem, the answer. Say it, say be still. Your phone calls, go, say it, your phone calls, text messages, and running around will not bring you the answer. Be still. Your lack of sleep, continue, will not bring you the answer. Discussing your problems with everybody will not bring you the answer. Beating your wife, whether you are married or not, say it. Say beating your husband too will not solve the problem. Harassing your children will not solve the problem. Committing suicide will take you to hell. Look, do you know people who claim they don't have energy, I'm surprised that they are wasting the remaining one doing useless things instead of them to go to the presence of God and die there and say, Lord, this thing, whether or not it is answered, I'm already in trouble. There's no other trouble to enter. So let me stay in your presence and die there. There is a way you put pressure on the integrity of God. When he knows he's the last card truly in your life, you'll be surprised to see what he will do. Many of us have options. You must follow him. He said, if you will not believe me, believe me for the work's sake. Believe that I am in my father and we are one. There is a oneness in us. I handed responsibility to my father and I submitted to his authority. It gave me rest. Brothers and sisters, any miracle that does not draw you closer to Jesus. Listen, even if that miracle was produced by the power of God, if it does not draw you closer to Jesus, you have not really received the real miracle. You have received the experience, but you have not discerned it to make you grow. I am surprised that the more people receive miracles, they now run away from God. When Zacchaeus had a miracle, he dropped down from the tree, gave up his, his um, tax collecting work and immediately walked with Jesus. When Peter saw the miracle of the fish, he said, go away from me, I'm a sinner. And Jesus said, no, come, come, come and sit down. Let's eat together. Miracles draw people. You are a drunkard. You don't spend one hour without taking a bottle of, of Gulda. You have been sitting here for hours now. The urge is not there. That's a miracle. The miracle is not so that immediately after Koinonia, you quickly go back and take one more before you sleep. You have frustrated the grace of God. You know, let me tell you something. By God's grace, I believe in miracles. But I also believe the message that miracles give. We don't discern the languages. We only gyrate in the experiences. That's why Satan corrupts. When a native doctor gives you a miracle, he, he attaches a message to it. He says, by this miracle, know that this small thing, this horn you are seeing, is powerful. And when you receive that miracle, you will go back to the man again. There is nobody who runs away from result. When you receive results in an area, you stay there. If the result is consistent, you camp there. So that you visit God's presence, receive a miracle and run away. And only go back. Now that you have acknowledged that he's the only one who can produce the miracle, stay there. Tell your neighbor, stay with God. Please prophesy, say stay with God. There are people here as they are saying stay with God. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you. Because I don't care whether you are born again or not. The kingdom is not a priority to you. You probably just came here because the sickness or the challenge or the bills or whatever is eating you up. Yes, God will touch you. But if all you get tonight is prophecy so that you can build a house. You have not discerned it. Miracles. Genuine miracles. Produced by the spirit. Should draw men to God. So when you see the favor, it brings tears in your eyes. And you say, Lord, I will walk with you forever. I've tried every other thing, but I've settled with you. Say amen. The last message that miracles produce. There are many more, but let me just stop here. Oh, scripture for the third point. John 10, 30 to 38. Just write it and you go and read it later. Our time is gone. 
John 10 30 to 38 the next point what God is saying tonight and what he will say always with genuine miracles listen this is what he's saying my servant is my representative he represents my voice to you hear him the last message that miracles produce is that God is speaking to you that if I can come to you and prophesy to you if you can get healed if you can get blessed God is saying something he's saying the man you are seeing the ministry you are part of are a representation of my program on earth here and now so have the confidence to not just listen to me listen to them miracles are a language that demonstrate that the man speaking to you the one with whom God will use to produce the miracles I know people say in meetings we have not come to see any man we came to see Jesus that's true but listen to what father Abraham told Lazarus he said they have he said let somebody come you know return from the grave and he said no they have the law and the prophets they should listen to them in other words there are people that represent what the out-of-body experience would have given them listen to them a man who can tap from an unseen realm and bring an anointing to touch your life it will be stupid for you to believe that he's not at, in touch with God so if he tells you Jesus Christ wants a relationship with you and you don't listen to that one you have not discerned the miracle are we together now if I come and stand on stage here and I'm just standing and you are falling and shouting and receiving an impartation that is a message it's not just it's not about really about a man but it's the fact that God is speaking and he has found a vessel he's speaking with so you listen to the man speak as though you are listening to God forget about the imperfections that will come you are not alone the Holy Ghost is there to see through it what if I listen to everything and I fail no. how did they write the Bible How did they write the Bible? All kinds of people wrote the Bible. Temperous people. Bad people. But in the midst of it, the purposes of God were still preserved. Holy men wrote. Regardless of their imperfections. Let me tell you. There is a degree to which no matter how much flesh you have, God will veto it to make sure certain things will pass to his people with the level of purity that they need. Whether it is intellectual limitation, hear me. Whether it is spiritual limitation that is why a donkey can talk do you know what it takes for a donkey to learn english when men of god pray for utterance utterance is not oratory utterance is the ability of the holy spirit to superimpose your flesh and grant that your communication be full of light that it be accurate and with minimal if any corruption as it gets into the heart of the receptors that's utterance utterance is not the ability to speak english that's oratory utterance is a spiritual thing the capacity to communicate realities such that regardless the spiritual level of the listeners they will receive that one you have to pray for it you go to school to get oratory but you stay with the spirit to get utterance hallelujah Hebrews chapter 2 when you read from verse 4 the Bible talks about the man Jesus he said he was approved Hebrews 2 verse 4 can you give it to us quickly God also bearing witness he talked about the man Jesus and how that he appeared unto certain people and those people now haven't commissioned them to go and represent him the Bible says God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will so God confirmed their word you may doubt their English but you may not doubt the result the same way some of you will not doubt what you are about to experience you know I watch people receive miracles and sometimes I know even them they don't agree have you seen somebody falling under the anointing and he's shocked as he's going down what's happening to me but he's still going down anyway that's the same way your life will change you will sit down and not know what is happening to you 
you will just walk out of this place and my God, like the chains of Peter fell, you will see chains just fall and leave you. It says God bearing them witness. So what are miracles? Instruments of witness. God validates the fact that this person is my servant. Listen to him. He has been approved like you have NAVDAC registration number on water. Now there are those who produce water at the back of their house and don't have NAVDAC registration number. When they catch them, you find them. Whether they are sincere or not, they were not approved. We're about to pray. Isaiah 44, verse 25 and 26. Two scriptures and then we'll begin to pray. That staring is happening again. Isaiah 44, 25 to 26. Listen. Talking about God now. The God that frustrated the tokens of the liars and make it divine as mad. The Bible says he turned wise men backward and makes their knowledge foolish. Listen to what he does, 26. That's what he does to them, but this is what he does to his servant. That confirmeth the word of his servant and performeth the counsel of his messengers. What is the confirmation of the word? You are blessed. If it happens, it's a confirmation. What is performing the counsel? Be healed. And immediately you are healed. That's a performance. That's creation. Like a woman is in, her, her father is in Adamawa. And she's here in Zaria. And a word comes. And all of a sudden she goes back. And the man who had an accident now is walking. He performed the counsel. So if there is no proof in your life. Among the many variables you have to check is whether you are approved. They, no, 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 no. You can be a servant of God, but not yet be approved. Being called does not ever mean being approved. Approved means you are being released to begin to dispense the realities of the kingdom. Many people think the opposite of being approved is being fake. No, the opposite of being approved is being real, but unapproved. There are many unapproved genuine servants of God. Unapproved genuine servants of God. In ministry for many years. Ask Isaiah. He was prophesying but he was not approved. 6 verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died. Isaiah saw the Lord. A call was taken and given to him. Is that true? He said here am I send me. God didn't say I'm already sending you. That was when his ministry started. You can be doing a lot of things. The opposite of being approved, get this. The opposite of being approved is not being fake. Fake is in another category. You can be real, yet not accredited. Like you are a student, but you don't have a certificate yet. You are in school. You are intelligent. You may even be on IT. You may even be doing projects, but it doesn't make you a graduate. There is a certificate. Do you have it? Many people just stand and say, the Bible says this sign shall follow. I am a believer. Be healed. We keep mocking ourselves with nonsense. Because when you read the Bible intellectually, you will get not head, Sophia, human wisdom. You must read it of the spirit. Tarry ye in Jerusalem. He had told them many times, do you know before he said tarry ye? He had sent them one time. He said go two by two. What happened to the power that is now saying tarry? until he be endued what happened to the power that they came back blind i saw he gave them his name they were not yet approved they only went in his name that's why i said don't rejoice that miracles you didn't do anything there if i tell you the dynamics of the result you didn't participate the most important thing is that you must be a part of this family your names being written in heaven approved when you are approved, it's like a register in the realm of the spirit. So when God is paying approved servants, you receive your share. You are not receiving salary, find out whether you are employed. That's why the Bible says, those he called, he glory, he, um, those he predestined, he called. But he has not glorified them yet. Those he called, after a season of building, he now glorified them. If a man will punch himself, that man will be a vessel unto honor. He can stop there as a vessel unto honor. Comma, 
meat for the master's use. Believe me, many approved singers, not mistrels in the spirit, they sing and twist their tongue and they think the secret is in minor songs. And you sing all kinds of minor songs. You think the secret is in clashing cymbal because Joshua Selman is doing it. You harass every drummer to clash every cymbal. No, show me the certificate. Let no one trouble me, Paul says, for I bear. There is a badge. Demon said, Jesus, I know. We see his certificate. A man approved of God. Approved of God. Approved of God. Paul the apostle was approved of God. Let me tell you, every true servant of God who has worked with God and has a dealing with God is approved. And when he's approved immediately, whether you are called into the ministry of helps, there must be a sign from heaven. When Jesus was born, he was approved of God. There was a sign. A star arose. On the day of Pentecost, that experience was approved of God. There was a sign. Every time there is approval, there is, there is a sign. Where is your own? It could mean you are not even in the school completely. Or you can be in the kingdom and not be in the school of the spirit. There are two different things. Like there are people in ABU. Some are selling rice. Some, are, uh, some have, some, some are selling um, things. You are inside ABU, but you are not in any faculty. So you can be in the kingdom, but not in the school of the spirit only those in the school of the spirit access power and command the grace that will keep nations still i'd like you to pray one minute and say lord i'm in your school oh nothing is taking me out of there i'm not only in the kingdom i'm in the school of the spirit the place where men are made with power the place where men access the presence of god superior dimensions of spiritual reality pray in one minute Thank you, Father, for being in the kingdom. I gave my heart to you and I'm there. But Lord, I walk with you consciously in obedience. He that endures to the end, he shall be given a crown and a white stone. There are rewards. Not everything in the kingdom is a gift. Brothers and sisters, there are rewards. That's why there are diversities of results. If there are no rewards, everything will be possible for everybody at the same time. Because the Lord is rich unto all. Why are there disparity in results? It's disparities of trainings. Just like you have a professor, you have a master's holder, you have an undergraduate, you have a secondary school certificate holder. Different seasons that provide different accesses to graces. Lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians will rise up to begin to pray now. God will do a quick walk. Second Corinthians 12, verse 12. By this little teaching, I, I like you to desire more in God. More in God. Greater grace. A time will come your talk will weary people they will be tired of you when you speak and there are results your words become heavy they look like the word of God second Corinthians 12 12 Paul was speaking about his credentials you used to know me as a scribe but I had an encounter I was in the wilderness of Arabia for over 19 years he was in the kingdom but he was in the wilderness of Arabia after 19 solid years of stringent building with the Lord a testament came truly the signs of an apostle there are signs called the signs of an apostle the sign is not the name I am Apostle Jeffrey I am Apostle Joshua Selman no I am Pastor this I am Reverend this the word apostle there does not does mean apostle like an office. The sign of an approved and a sent one. When Navdak approves something, no matter what the drink is, there is something they stamp there. 
no matter what it is check somewhere even if there's no space they create space and stamp it it is based on this brothers and sisters that we can gather people like this by grace and say come this is not the issue of my personal faith this is the issue of a NAFDAQ number koinonia is registered this is like you have jam center there is jam center that is for crooks when people go there they don't even write exams is that true you pay money but there's what they call uh, what they call it approved centers when you go there you sit down there are tables they have gone through a, tra a training by the grace of God by the election of grace and by our determination to take advantage of it truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you all in what was the first thing the first sign is not miracles the patience to endure till you access it the first sign of an apostle a saint one is not signs and wonders many foolish people deceive themselves the first sign is patience for many years you will walk with God and not see one result the first sign is patience you will prophesy nothing will happen you will pray for the sick nothing will happen but you are still in the school so patience then in signs notice the progression signs trickles then it now moves to the next realm wonders then the apex of your apostolic ministry is called mighty works that one is not personal miracle that is territories elijah stands and said there shall be no rain look at the progressions these four levels if you don't enter this level in ministry you will never be fulfilled there are people this where they are patience 10 years they will not move others signs here and there somebody is testifying you you are let me tell you how you know it's a sign you are not even sure whether it came from you they just say pastor prayed for me and sincerely you cannot tell when there is no predictability a sign shows direction that's not it if you see a sign to abu that sign is not abu it's pointing you there wonders a realm of predictable results you begin to see certain things and then before you reach the apex he called it mighty works the only other person that title was used for was jesus he said what wisdom is this that such mighty works were wrought this is where we are going where you shift systems so don't just say i'm born again i will enter here you are joking it's the same way saying i have admission i'm a first class student they gave you admission you walk your way to first class the options are there he gave on to one five two one according to their several ability not his desire for them several things will be happening tonight brothers and sisters I want you to trust three things tonight as we pray one listen 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 number one believe in your faith in God and God's faith in you two listen believe in the covenant that we have with God I told you that our work with God is based on relationship but kingdom advancement is based on covenant there are covenants that men have with God let me tell you listen I can take one bottle of beer here and come up and minister I will minister by the covenant my relationship with God is something he will deal with me with later on but as far as the covenant of using my life my grace and koinonia to minister not even me can stop it that's why when Elijah died the covenant was still on his bones Elisha his bones still raised the dead because the grace on him was authorized to do that not whether he was living or dead that's the basis of man to transfer that's the correct basis of man to transfer that when you touch a man or shake a man you are going not with a material you are carrying a covenant to your home God stops dealing with you now based on you it is on that basis we can say the God of this when you say the God of Isaac there's something about God and Isaac that makes him hear you the God of Jacob there's another thing 
I don't encourage people to say the God of Joshua, Selman and this, but brothers and sisters, there are covenants. There are men, God, enter the covenant with them like Joshua. No man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. He didn't say where you do well. That's the covenant. This house you see is a mystery of covenants. Covenants here and there. That's the reason why we make certain bold claims. I truly believe that if all I use is just my personal faith, I will be afraid. I have eyes. I'm a human being. You can see cases that you know are impossible, but there are higher dimensions. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray. I've convinced you enough to believe that you can walk out of here free. Please lift your voice and in one minute blast in tongues. Pray in the spirit. Lord, I believe that by these two immutable things it is impossible for God to lie. Are you praying? For surely the signs of an apostle were what were wrought in patience and signs and wonders and mighty works. Listen, in one minute, please, young old, just walk with this instruction. Mention clearly the issue of concern and say, Father, visit it. Don't just say, God bless me. That's not a very wise statement. Be very exact. He said, give us this day. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Please pray passionately. Emmanuel, we want to see you. Pray. We want to hear from you, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, we want to see you, we want to hear from you. broken burdens are about to be lifted families are about to rise pray Listen, listen, there are spirits, you've heard me say it, that tie down men, there are spirits that tie down destinies, there are spirits that tie down families and are responsible for the predicament of people. When you come into the presence of God like this, some of you are lovely, innocent people, you love God with all your heart. But certain things are not going well with your life. Those spirits must give way. There is an anointing. Don't be afraid. Don't ask whether it will happen. It's not just your personal faith. You have believed God. That's all right. Leave the rest to Him. Whenever I call you, 
you will answer me My altar is calling you Oh God My altar is calling you Oh God My secret place is calling is calling you oh god take my praise oh god take my praise will you take my praise take my praise it's calling you all right we're ready let's go lift your hands I want to pray for you that every spirit and every force my God I see so many people so many people who will be delivered so many people who will be delivered I want you to bring them out the anointing is here it has come lift your voice at the count of three I want you to shout that name Jesus inside and outside I come against every spell every enchantment by the power that is in the name of Jesus that as God's people shout in the name that is above all names let every dragon crumble are you ready now at the count of three one two three my God charms 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 I'm seeing charms I'm hearing in my spirit charms bring them out charms charms Divination, instruments of wickedness, divination, I curse you, Katokata, outside, the angel of his presence, outside, sweeping like rain, that view, divination, instruments of wickedness, I command you to leave, I command you to leave, place of his power so katatata reketekete empros katalikata reketekete shekete kotakata balaraba lift your hands my god my god my god listen i'm seeing something in the realm of the spirit this thing that they count there's this thing that they count one by one in the name of jesus that's what i'm seeing and the Lord is telling me that there are instruments of divination. People are about to be set free now. Lord, I don't know where they are, but like fire is visiting at least 21 people inside and outside. In the name of Jesus, let it go. I release that fire now. Help them right now. Right now. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, no devil will stand it. I assure you, no devil will stand it. Whether you are inside or outside, there is grace to set you free. I command divination. I command yokes. Broken. Lift your hands and pray. I'm seeing a number in the spirit, 74. And the Lord is telling me that's the number of people that must be delivered from the spirit of delay. Lift your voice. This delay is a wicked spirit. I want to pray. You may not know you belong to that category. It's the anointing that will fish you out. Guys, be sensitive, please, please. In the name of Jesus, 74 people. Lord, wherever they are, I stretch my hands right now. The spirit of delay at the count of three. I'd like you to shout Jesus. One, two, three. Let them go now. Let them go now. The cause of delay. The spell of delay. So take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it.
those outside only those outside lift your hands the Lord is directing me those outside at the count of three I want you to shout Jesus first overflow second overflow and online there are certain people that will be picked by angels strong delay spirit outside in the name of Jesus are you ready just those outside one two three I command that spirit there's fire outside it must go now it must go now leave that sister leave our destiny hallelujah Faith, faith, F A I T H. Faith. Who is faith? I'm hearing a name, faith. Are you faith? Hold on, hold on. Don't match the people here, please. Faith. This person is outside. It's a small girl. She's wearing a white something. White like white. Is there someone like that? Come. What's your name? This is the girl I saw in the spirit. I'll pray for you. Come. What's your name? Faith. Your name is Faith. Come. Where are you from? Let's hurry up. Please, if I mention your case, I don't have to mention every case. Don't worry. Our time is constrained. We wanted to make it a vigil. But we are off to Lagos tomorrow. Just faith. Let them come. Are you an usher? Usher, lift your hands. You are the first person to receive the miracle that I'm praying for. I'm looking at you and I'm not seeing an usher. God is saying he's visiting your family right now. Receive that grace now. Right now. Let that devil leave our family. Go. Delay. Out of our family. After that, you can do your usher work. Look at me, my dear. Where are your parents? Huh? Where is home? Where do you stay? You are faith too? Huh? Let me pray for you. Hold my hands. It's not just you I'm praying for. Look at me. I want to pray for your family. Your family is being greatly oppressed. Huh? Go and tell your parents that a man of God prayed for them. I'm seeing a family that came from Abuja. That's what the Lord is showing me. Abuja not just a person like a family that came from Abuja father in the name of Jesus let there be a miracle supernatural miracle miracle all of you your names are faith hold on please hold your hands together um so that we can save time we still have sick people to pray for we are going to be very fast it won't take long I want us to finish very fast tonight all the faiths I'm going to pray your name is faith too Osha you are not sure you're a worker you will receive your own differently lift your hands the Lord is saying I should tell you he's giving you beauty 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 in the name of Jesus beauty all the faith I'll just lay hands on one person as a point of contact to you father I don't know why they are out but may the anointing flow from this one lady right now to every one of them right now right to all of you in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ so that we will save time by the power of the Holy Spirit. I see a family from Abuja. Where are you? Please let me speak to you. From Abuja. Clap for Jesus as they come. Quickly, please. Hold on. Who is sick? Who is sick? Who is sick? Chest. Your chest has a problem. Yes. You sleep in the night. Yes. And you feel as if there's something on it. Yes. This is witchcraft. Yes. But someone else is sick. I'm saying, where are you from? Abuja? All of you? Abuja, yes. Hold on. Yes. All of you? Yes. I didn't say if you are from Abuja, please. You are a family from Abuja. Hold on, hold on. If they are here, don't push them. Let's be gentle on them. Why is he there? Okay. No, you don't have to. Those under the anointing, listen, listen. When people are under the anointing, especially for deliverance, there's a reason why they are out. Don't just lift them and push them. You can shift them. There's a reason why we ask them to come out. It's not to show they are falling. You already saw them fall there. Yeah. You are the one from Abuja. Lay your yes. hands. Come. Let me lay my hands on you. You are scattered. You are all the same family. All of you. The ones at the back. Are you the same family? You are on your own. 
you would have sat down there my brother my sister two of you you are together I will pray for you what do you want God to do for you please we don't have time if you are not sure I'll just keep you aside so that we can deal with it. I need employment employment yes, sir. I need a job. Do you love yes, God job. yes sir huh? yes sir seriously yes sir what of you I want to follow my education sir see it's not everybody I'm just speak on behalf of your family we don't have all the time I have to pray for you my brother huh? God will heal you and then for you what's wrong that I said there's somebody sick. You heard me say there's somebody sick. He's having chest pain, but this man. Leave chest pain. Chest pain is not this. This one is witchcraft. It's not sickness. This. Okay. We have to pray. Huh? I'm looking at this and I'm seeing these things that doctors used to check organs of people. I'm seeing that he has a wound. He has a wound inside. And the wound is not healing. We have to pray. Father, heal that in Jesus' name. Lift your hands. I'll just lay my hands on you very quickly. My major focus is to pray for the sick. That breakthrough, we can prophesy that one, but I, I want to pray for the sick. Right now, in the name of Jesus, be healed, my brother. Your chest. You go and get a job. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. It's done. Go back to your seat. Please come quickly. Let me pray for you. It's done. I pray for you. Why are you here? Huh? God should what? Set me loose. Set you loose. Distraction. You are distracted. One, two, you are very disorganized. Look at me. Your major problem is not demonic. You are very scattered and disorganized. You need your life to get some level of order. Lift your hands. And you, you want to do ministry. You, you don't need, you, you heard me say approved, right? You settle down. You don't just run around. If you are disorganized, you will not get results. Father, grant him grace. Supernatural grace. Something is leaving you and something else is coming into you. That thing that must leave you go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I release an anointing upon you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. Why are they here, your children? Come. What's, are they sick? What's wrong with them? This one has a heart problem. Heart problem? Yes. Oh my God. And this one has breathing. Breathing problem. They are all your children. They are, children. They are all your children. Hold them. It's you I should pray for, not them. The, the children are just reacting to something. I have to pray for you. Eh? Things are not going on well. Where's your husband? Abroad. He's abroad. How long has he been there? Getting to here. What I want to tell you, eh, is not something I will say in the open. Are you hearing me? But uh, I pray for the grace of God. That's that's all I will say for now. Eh? And I'll pray for you because you see, any success. No, let hold my hands. Let's pray. Why are you holding her hands? You are a sister. I'll pray for you. Huh? You want to marry and what again? Are you married? Uh -huh. Marriage is one. What's the second prayer point? Job. What's the third one? Financial breakthrough. These are the three things I brought you here. There's one more. There are four. Ministry. Ministry. So there are four. I'm seeing it like that. That's why I'm telling you. Did you show me? Did you tell me? That's what I'm telling you. Marriage is number one. Then job finance and then you have the call of god you're a woman of prayer and god shows you dreams is that true where's the mic yes sir. god shows you dreams yes, sir. and you are wondering you don't know whether you should wait for your husband or start ministry now because that's your fear you see the anointing is on her that's your fear you don't know whether you should start something now or you should wait for the man god will send into your life and it's because you're a nice lady you don't want to do anything that looks antagonistic to his ministry this is, I'm hearing you discuss with a friend. Huh? And that's, so God is going to solve that problem for you. Well, you, let's pray. Hold my hands. Father, what God has joined together, the Bible says, let no man, whether, whoever. Man also includes woman. Man doesn't just mean a male figure. Man includes man plus every Jezebel that represents a system and I'm using I'm not saying your husband are you getting me now 
this is not something I'll say here. I want to prophesy. Any Scriptures talk any about a blessed that mess now, that and happens to a man whose delight to reap is in the law of God. In the name of Jesus. So as someone says, that nonsense says right that now. his delight is in the law of God. And don't you will hear he testimonies from this thing I just day and night. This little to prayer that that has man delivered like somebody tree, right now. Planted by the rivers of water. Father, whose leaves do not wither. The spirit of infirmity, I command it to leave your life now. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that um, man okay. planted by the rivers of water. Problem. Your leaves heart. are forever what going to bear. And we know that your seed your will not pass by. You me, will must forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with this you. Baby now so we would entreat you well. to subscribe to this channel. How many of you know that the baby will not grow well? As well, as until he hit grows, that notification bell to receive that should more updates from us. Because we know that whatever I know a lady here that is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. These kinds of things, you know, at the point of conception, several things happen. Jesus, in the name that is above all names, I pray in the presence of your people. This is why you sent me. By the power of the Holy Spirit, let this heart become normal now. You see, you see what is happening? I told you it's the mother that should be prayed for. I'm praying for him. And see the person falling under the anointing. Because that's where it came from. It returns to hell now. I can't hold this one it's big in the name of jesus supernatural miracle see the anointing is on her too somebody come and hold her please hold her hold her god is healing the baby and healing her too. two of them hold her the anointing is on her god has removed something from your family related to this there's something you would have suffered that is related to this thing you are an usher while you held him that's why the anointing touched him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to prophesy on two people. They will come under the anointing now. Please bring them out. Just two people right here indoors. There's an anointing that is coming on two people right now. Thank you, Jesus. The, the Lord is just giving a word. We're going to pray for the sick now. Two people. You can't stand it. It's like fire. It will come on you. Please bring them. August. Is it Augusta? Augusta. August, Augusta, August, something that looks August, something, a name, Augusta, Augustina, or something like that. Please, anybody with that name, Augustina, sir, this man, come, this this fair man, come, your breakthrough has come. There's a lady outside that August, something, you are outside in the overflow. There is another one, you are wearing chain, chain, like uh, this thing they wear. Is there someone like that? Not you, sir. You? There's somebody you're wearing. I want to pray. Uh, ah. Look at you. Lift your hands. Look at me. Shout, I avoid trouble. Shout it. I avoid trouble. You are speaking English. Shout it. I avoid troubles. Because... I'm seeing the devil planning to really frustrate you December and we have to pray against it and this is something that is is something you are vulnerable to but in the name of Jesus no trouble by the power of the Holy Spirit no trouble in the name of Jesus you don't stop them you just guide them in the name of Jesus sir I want to pray for you God is about to change your life you're a man look at me sir two things will happen to you I say it in the open you will come and stand here look at me one Look at me, sir. A level of financial breakthrough you have never seen in your Amen. life. Amen. Amen. It's what is going to come Amen. upon you. I want you to believe it, sir. It's not just because maybe uh, I'm talking to you because all of that. That's number one. Number two is that I want to pray for you. I'm seeing a thermometer rising up and down your chest. This is BP. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. You have BP. Yes, sir. Did you tell me? No, sir. I have to pray on it. If I don't pray on it, you are going to have serious problems. Because I'm seeing you go to a doctor. 
maybe now or in the future and the doctor is specifically telling you not to eat salt salt like completely i don't know what but i think something that has not to do salt so i have to pray for you i'm going to pray for you and any other thing you came here with hold my hands up with both of your hands i want you to believe father there is a grace for prosperity receive that grace in the name of jesus is there is an anointing that makes men prosper look at me sir in the name of jesus i release that grace god gave it to me i pray for you again in the name of jesus that mantle and unction that can cause a man to prosper may it come upon your life in the name of jesus christ god bless you sir and bp come sir let the bp be healed now in the name of jesus huh what's your name what's his name augustine augustine augusta thank you come you are the one who needs deliverance i'm going to pray for you but lift your hands i'm looking at you and i'm seeing uh now this is not death but i'm seeing you know how a place has been deserted like a wilderness that's what i'm seeing as i'm looking at you and i have to pray for you because if i don't pray for you are you married huh? no, if i don't pray for you number one you will not get any reasonable man to marry you it's all these foolish men who will loiter around and come and not be serious huh? in the name of jesus for you and your family be set free right now by the power of the holy spirit i open up those doors jane 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 you are a fair woman looks like an evil lady you are wearing it like a sleeveless jane sleeveless something like that who is that huh I'm the one. look at she's surprised you think i'm a herbalist i've been talking to people why are you looking like um one the first miracle is there's something in your stomach yes sir. is that true yes did you tell me yes, sir. something is biting you physically like a snake it moves down to your breast region and comes down there yes, every day yes, sir. that's the first thing god is going to do stand up number two see she doesn't want to stand up stand up madam You are a good woman, but you have suffered. I have to pray for you. Somebody came into your life and did something I cannot say in the open. You have been crying till now. You gave this man everything. Is that true? Yeah, right. Everything you gave this man, he rubbish your life into zero and went away. When I was preaching about mercy, God was talking to you. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes. Don't worry. The man even said you are a fool. God will use the foolish things and confound the wild. Stand up. Three. That man that appears in your dream is going to leave you now. Stand up. This, this wicked spirit. Stand up, my dear. Hold my hands. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I love the power of God. That person lifting that picture, lift it high right now the power of god will touch you lift both of your hands there's anointing coming on you right now that's it your prayer is answered it's done completely the miracle for which you are lifting that picture for completely is gone may your life turn and change like day and night in the name of jesus i close every door you have opened in your life and I command by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let there be a miracle for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. One, two, three, four, four months. There is someone, you're a businessman. You've not done anything for four months. It's like, you are, I don't know if it's a project you are doing or you are supposed to do something. Four months, you have been completely grounded. I don't know if you are inside or outside. Please run. God wants to pray for you. Why are they here? Jane. I want to pray for you and then we'll pray for the sick. Jane. Ah. Madam, I finished with you. You can go back rejoicing. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be breakthrough for you. Let there be breakthrough for you.
If I pray for you, please go back. If I don't speak for you, uh, upon you, it just means I'm not hearing anything else. Jane. Your name is Jane? You are the businessman. Lift your hands where you are. Just lift it there. Lift your hands where you are. I said keys were given to people earlier on. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands on you. And everyone who relates to this miracle too, may they receive it. I release an anointing upon you right now. Right now. Everyone who relates to this, in the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, you need wisdom, you need strategy, and you need connection. These three things, these are the things you came for. I release upon you grace. Don't be confused. Things are about to turn around in your life. Come. You need a helper. Somebody helped you. You did not thank him. You didn't thank him and this thing has affected you. Doctor. Doctor. I'm seeing a doctor. I don't know if it's all this. Please come, sir. I want to speak to you, sir. Sorry, I'm having to call you. But the Lord is saying, I should tell you, is going to come very fast. Go and write it down. This is what the Lord is saying, I should tell you. Even me, I don't understand what I'm saying. But the Lord is saying, I should tell you, is going to come very fast. It will bring three things. One, envy. Number two, I see your superiors angry with you. And the Holy Spirit is ministering to me. And he's saying it is because this kind of speed is not common. Koinoni, I want you to witness this thing and write it. You will see it happen. Sir, I pray for you. Shade, you are a witness to what God is doing to your husband. God is going to give him such a dimension of speed. Sir, this will start from now till June 2017. You will see speed that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, do you know why you are stranded? Only one reason. You violated the law of honor. The law of honor. This is not just witchcraft. Don't, don't act as if you don't need people. You always need them for your business to rise. Huh? Why am I seeing piles of clothes? What do you do? I sell clothes. You sell clothes. Honor is what you have violated. Hold my hands. Let your business grow now. Go and excel. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. What is Abba? Well, we go to Abba too. You go to Abba yes, sir. to buy clothes there. Yes, sir. But favor has closed there. Yes, sir. The person who used to help you, something happened between you and him. Yes, sir. You didn't honor him. He was very fair to you. Huh? Yes, Let me just tell you the truth. That's why I say it's the law of honor. Yes, sir. After I pray for you, he's yes. going to call you. Amen. The business will start again. Amen. Grace for you. I'm not revealing. I'm making it happen. This is not revelation. The word will make it happen. I place the word of God upon your life. And I declare that things will change. In Jesus' name. Why are you here? What's this? Project. Project. What are you doing? I want to run this school. Huh? You love children. Huh? And you want to teach. I'm seeing you doing something with a blackboard. Huh? Blackboard. Yes. Ah, you are strong. You want to establish a school. That's what I'm seeing. Nursery school, primary school, secondary school. Yes. That's what you want to do. Yes. Who told you it cannot be done? Huh? It can be done. You believe that? Yes. Hold my hands. Go and honor somebody who is already in having a school. And God will open that door for you. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, we are going to pray for the sick. Please listen. I want, this is the last miracle service for the year. I want everybody to receive. There will be such a heavy mantle transfer after the prayer. I just want us to, in the next few minutes, to finish here. So I want you to please cooperate with us. I pray for you. You are all blessed in Jesus' name. Now, please listen. All those who are sick, in this venue, listen, please. This venue and uh, the, the overflow by the roadside, I want you to just move to the front of your projector. The projector screen. All of you who are trusting God for a healing miracle. No matter how many you are, we will pray for you. That's why we are here. Those outside, move to your projector screen outside. Now listen, part of those outside can come in. Not everybody, a few of them, maybe at the back, you can come in. Then those trusting God for miracles here, for you and your loved one. Now please come up. 
come up quickly come up believing God come up believing God we want to do a thorough work tonight please we want to do a thorough work tonight this is what will happen now those outside is okay for those coming outside um, Pastor Jakes Pastor Jakes will help me handle the one by this pro, uh, the projector stand outside and then a Jimmy will go outside please guys let's trust God for grace for people to really get miracles hold on please people need let, let me just pray with you guys let's let's do a thorough work father grace in the name of Jesus let your healing power flow let that healing grace Lord in the name of Jesus let it work let that healing grace be at work let there be results in the name of Jesus please come Pastor Alpha come Benga promise Michael come all these hands I will tell you where to in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ grace for you let there be a very thorough results thorough results thorough results thorough results thorough results in the name of Jesus thorough results pastor um, you are Michael please you can go outside and help Jake's um, Benga you and promise you can go outside there with a Jimmy please just go outside let's see I will try to handle the ones here um, very very fast we need so many more people by God's grace pastor Femi come 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 you are here and you are hiding. Come. Come and hold my hands. Let that anointing come upon your life and then you will help me here. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he will help me here. Jesus, we release your healing power all over this place. Listen, please. For all those who are here, please listen. By the grace of God and it's not pride. God has given we a healing ministry. God has given us grace. Please be patient. We are going to hurry up. If I don't mention your case, don't worry. I'll just lay hands on you. I want us to cover grounds as much as possible. I would have just prayed for you, but that's not the instruction God gave us. Maybe if the ministry becomes too large, we can pray. But now I want to lay hands on everyone. There are people with cancers. There are people with all kinds of things. Just trust God. Worship team, please just create the atmosphere for us. If you are tired, maybe the media can play something, a worship song so that you rest too. Especially if you want a healing miracle. Come, lay your hand on your stomach. Father, you heal her in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your voice. If, if, they are, if the worship team, if you're tired, then the media can play something, a worship song. Let's be very fast. Please, as soon as I lay hands on you, I want you to believe God and go back. Thank you, Jesus. Let there be miracles. Now, those of you who are, hold on. Those of you who are seated, please, I permit you to put on your phone. Call your loved ones. Whatever their requests are, I want to pray. This is our last miracle service for 2016. Anything that has not been done, that must be done before December 31st, I want you to write it. Call your loved ones, those online, submit your request. We are all going to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead. You will do a miracle, a miracle today. Thank you, Jesus. Miracle Walker, you are a miracle walker. Come and do a miracle, a miracle today. You will do a miracle. Restoration, a miracle. Restoration, today. restoration, restoration. Now, now, you are a miracle walker. A miracle today You will do a miracle A miracle today Your name is Yahweh Your name is Yahweh hey. Miracle walking God Your name is Yahweh oh, Your name is Your name is Yahweh. Oh, your name is. 
it's all over your body this thing everywhere how long one year it just started coming hold my hands let it go now I cost the spirit responsible for this now let her go be healed now this wicked thing it disappears from your skin and lives your life forever it is done darling God bless you your name is me I curse every witchcraft I curse every witchcraft from the village from the village over my life over my life in the name of Jesus in the name of that's where your problem is coming from but I pray for you in the name of Jesus let there be a miracle by the anointing of the Holy Spirit ah mama something is leaving you in the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to leave you. You're with her? Help her. Help my mom, please. You need favor in your life and you need speed. These two things. You need favor and speed. Ah! The anointing is still on our mother. Favor and receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go ahead, guys. Your name is Yah. Oh, your name is Yahweh. Say your name is Yahweh. You are a miracle walking God. Your name is Yah. Oh, your name is Yahweh. Hey. We sing your name is Yahweh. Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words, let them not depart from thy eyes, and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart 
that no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.